Today, I'll be showing you how to create this amazing e-commerce website step by step. Hey guys, my name is Hogan and welcome to this tutorial where I'll be showing you how to create this really amazing e-commerce website step by step. So by the end of this video, you'll have your own e-commerce website up and running, ready to accept payments. But before we actually begin, I do want to state that this tutorial isn't a tutorial about coding. So you're not going to learn how to do like PHP and HTML and CSS or um, build a website like eBay, which is like an auction website. This is just a really simple and clean e-commerce website, all right? So if you don't wanna spend you know, thousands and thousands of dollars hiring someone else to do it for you, or months learning how to code, then this tutorial is perfect for you. So this e-commerce website is suitable for most uh, small to medium-sized businesses. So you can actually sell anything that you like, as long as it's not illegal, okay? So you could sell, you know, shoes, you could be selling women's dresses, you can also sell digital products, for example, music and also ebooks, furniture, electronics, bags, or even iPhone cases, right? So you can sell anything that you like. So if you actually don't have any products yet to sell, then I'm actually gonna show you three amazing places where top brands actually source their products from really cheaply and sell it for a really good margin. So you don't necessarily have to have products ready to sell yet. I'll also show you how you can actually get started selling stuff without actually investing thousands and thousands of dollars in your product and inventory, okay? So this is actually a live store right now. And I'm gonna give you a really quick tour of exactly what we're gonna be building. And I'll also show you a test transaction to basically show you how a customer will buy from your store, how you will receive the order, how you receive the payment, and how you actually fulfill the order and things like that. So the e-commerce website that we're building today, it has a lot of the top features that you might expect from websites such as Gymshark, Nike, and also Topshop as well. So as you can see, Topshop has a really nice and simple header design, same with Nike and Gymshark. They've also got a secondary header where they display you know, free returns and free shipping. Here they've got a really cool drop down menu with a mega menu display. Same with our website. So we've got a really nice and simple header section, a mega menu that displays your products. You can also have a simple menu as well, just like that. Here you can actually add in your logo and your customers also have the option to add the product to a wish list. They can add it to the cart. They can also add a account so they can check out quicker and also they can search for the product directly here. So I'm gonna show you how to set up a really nice and simple slider image background. So you can also display a video if you want to, just like Topshop does. So the layout, you can actually change the layout to any layout because we're gonna be using a drag and drop builder. Okay, I'll be showing you how to add in your text, your buttons and things like that. And here is where you can display your newest collection, like your featured products. Okay, so you can arrange the layout as well. You don't necessarily have to have this layout, but this is the website that I'll be showing you how to create. I'll also show you how to add in your blog post. So blog posts are really good because you can actually write a article about maybe a new product line that you're developing, or you can also write articles about, you know, maybe like top 10 tips of finding the best wedding dress. And if you're selling wedding dresses, then people who are actually searching for the top 10 tips, they're gonna come to your website and maybe they're gonna buy a wedding dress. So it's really good to get you know targeted and free traffic to your website, okay? Here I'm also gonna show you how to add in a really nice gradient, how to add in videos and everything like that. So here I've got a really nice and simple footer section with your social media and your payment icons. I'll show you how to create all the important pages, for example, your about, shipping and delivery, and also a contact page. So people can actually you know type in their name their email and submit a message here. So if they have any question, this message will be directly sent to your inbox, all right? I'll also show you how to create a really nice FAQ page. Okay, so this can be any page, for example, a returns policy or shipping policy or anything like that. Okay, people can click on the question 
the answer will drop down like that, okay? And I'll show you how to create a blog page so you can display your blog post here, just like that. All right, so this website is also gonna be mobile responsive, so it's gonna fit on your tablets, iPads, your laptops, and also your desktop, but you can actually manage your shop from your mobile as well. So you can change the prices and manage the stock levels from your mobile phone. So you don't need any special software or any skills to build this website. I'll be showing you everything that you need to know step by step. And if the customer actually clicks on, let's say the shop page, this is gonna take us to our main shop page. And here is a product filter. So people can actually filter the products here. So let's say someone likes, maybe they wanna look for an ebook. So they select ebook, then this is all your ebooks that you sell, all right? They can add it to the wish list from here. They can also click into the product. And here is your title, your price, a customer review. Here you can enter in a short description, okay? Here you can display the image and people can zoom in on that image. You can also add additional images as well. And I'll be showing you how to add in, you know, your downloadable products, but also like a simple product or a variable product. For example, if you're selling maybe a jumper or something like that, and you have different sizes and different colors, then you can do that as well, okay? So we're gonna scroll down here. This is where you can put in a long description, okay? Like add in a video, additional images that you might wanna display, and your customer can also click on reviews as well. Here's the related products. And let's say the customer wants to buy that product, then they will click on add to cart, and that will automatically add that product to your cart. And then they can either check out automatically or they can click on view cart. Okay, so I'll also show you how to add in a coupon code so you can give your customers maybe a 30% discount. So for example, save 30, they can click on apply and then that coupon will actually apply here. Okay, so it starts at $29. Then with the coupon, uh, it ends up being only $20.30. So your customers can proceed to checkout, which is the default checkout, or they can proceed directly to PayPal, and that's gonna take their PayPal address and use that as the shipping address. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the default checkout. So I've got a really nice and simple and streamlined checkout process here. Your customers will need to enter in their name, last name, and because this is actually a virtual product, so it's not shipped, they don't need to put in an address. All right, so normally if it is a physical product, then they'll need to put in the address and that'll be required. So here we're gonna skip down and just put in an email address. All right, scrolling down, taxes will automatically calculate for you as well. All right, and your customers can also pay by various different uh, payment methods. So you can set up a direct bank transfer, check payments, cash on delivery, because you know some countries, for example, in the Philippines, I think they don't really use credit cards that often. You can also set up you know, cash on delivery as well. Okay, but I'm gonna show you how to set it up using PayPal. And even if your customer doesn't have a PayPal account, they can pay with their credit card. You can also set up Stripe payments as well. And let's say they're happy with the total here, selected the payment, then you can click on PayPal. So I'm gonna use my other PayPal account and then click on login, okay? And then we're gonna click on pay now. Okay, so after your customer has paid, this is the confirmation. And basically here is the download that they can actually click on and actually download directly to their computer. Okay, because this is actually a uh, virtual product. It's not actually a physical product. So people can actually download that and then they'll be good to go, all right? And this is the order confirmation that they will get, all right? and they can also download it from their email as well. And this is the customer that you will get as the actual e-commerce store owner. And then you'll need to fulfill the order. If it's a physical product, you'll need to ship it to them. And the payment is actually received to your PayPal account. So as you can see, payment from Hogan Chua. So this is from uh, my personal account. And as you can see, it's $20.30. So we're gonna go back here this is where you can actually manage your orders, right? So you can click into here and manage your orders and set the status as well, all right? You can also click on reports. So you can check how many sales that you are getting this week 
and you can look up the numbers. You can also click on the customers tab to actually view your customers, check the stock and taxes and everything that you need in the back end or the dashboard section of your website. So if we actually click back onto the website right now, okay, I think we are good to go and good to get started. But before I do, um, you can actually fast forward this video if I'm going too slow. If I'm going too fast, you can actually slow down the video, okay, by clicking on the settings option there. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. And I normally will get back to you within 24 hours. And I've also got all the timestamps listed down below. So you can skip to any section and revisit any section that you know, you're unsure about. Make sure to subscribe, give the video a like, and let's get started. Okay, so let's go over everything that we need. So the first thing that you need to actually build an e-commerce website is you'll need a domain name. A domain name is basically your website address. So for example, Google's domain name is google.com. Your one will be your e-commerce store name.com, okay? And the second thing that you'll need is a hosting account. Hosting is basically a server on the internet which stores your website's files, such as the images and the content so people can access that 24 seven, okay? So basically it's like, a virtual piece of land on the internet which saves your data and you need those two things to actually have a website online and the third thing is we'll need to actually install WordPress WordPress is something called a content management system and that basically allows you to actually build a website without needing to learn how to code and it's used by over 500 million different websites to actually power you know their, their blogs e-commerce stores and small business websites. Then we'll be using WooCommerce, which is the plugin or an application that adds e-commerce functionality to the WordPress website, because by default, WordPress doesn't have e-commerce functionality. WooCommerce is gonna allow us to add in products, you know, add in the shipping prices, set up the payment options and things like that. And then we'll be installing a theme. And a theme is basically the appearance of the website and it also includes the drag and drop builder, okay? So with those three free tools, we're gonna to be building our e-commerce website. So how much does everything cost? A domain name normally costs around, I think $15 or $12 every year. I think $15 every year. And hosting normally costs between five to $10 every single month, depending on which plan you actually get, okay? And WordPress is free, WooCommerce is free. The theme is also included in the description below, but you do have the option to get support and updates, which is highly recommended, especially for those of you who actually want to help, you know, your friends or family to actually build an e-commerce store. Um, you might need extra help and that is very useful, okay? And obviously the tutorial is free. So basically the total cost for you guys to start today is around $20 or $25, okay? So basically what we're gonna do first is we're gonna head over to hostgator.com to get our domain and hosting, okay? So you can get those two things at the same place. Okay, so open up a browser and we're gonna head to hostgator. So type in h-o-s-t-g-a-t-o-r.com and then click on enter. So this is where we're gonna be getting our domain name and also our hosting account. And I've been using HostGator for the last eight years or so, and they've been amazing. So that's why I recommend them. They've also got the 24 seven live chat support, which is awesome. And also a 45 day money back guarantee. Okay, so here you'll see a few different plans, but for most beginners, I recommend the, just the web hosting plan. Okay, so that's the cheapest and what I recommend for beginners. Then you can actually upgrade to cloud hosting if you start getting a lot of traffic to your website. It's a little bit more expensive though, okay? Or you could you know, start out getting that as well. So we're gonna click on website hosting up here on the left. Okay, so here is three different plans, the hatchling plan, baby, and also a business plan. So the business plan is probably a little bit more than you actually need at the moment. But obviously if you have the funds, then you can you know, get the business plan. But what I recommend is sticking to these two plans for most beginners, okay? For the hatchling plan, you can only host one domain. 
So for example, you can only have your brand.com. Okay, with a baby plan, you can have your brand.com, your friends brand.com, you know, you could have also have your clients websites hosted on one account. Okay, so if you know that you're going to be creating sort of more, you know, websites, then get the baby plan, it's only a little bit more expensive. But if you just want to create your first website, then get the hatchling. Okay, click on buy now. Okay, so here is where you're going to enter in the domain name that you want to register. Okay, so for example, my one will be create your own online store. And then you can select the extension that you want here and then click on the outside. Okay, so sometimes that might not be available because uh, someone else has probably registered that already and you need to be a little bit more creative. Okay, so for example, I'm going to change that to shop and let's see if that's available. Okay, so as you can see, that's available, uh, $13 every year. You've also got other extensions, but I personally recommend the .com because that's what most people actually type in the browser up here. Here, you need to scroll down, and normally the domain privacy protection will be checked. Okay, so I personally recommend it, but it's not necessary. Uh, what it basically does, it, it hides your details from the public. So people can't search up your domain name .com and then find your details. It's gonna keep your email you know, spam to a minimum and all that junk mail and stuff like that. So that's why it is selected here and that's why I recommend. Um, so scrolling down here, you need to select the package type and also the billing cycle. So if you're sort of unsure of you know, whether or not you wanna still do e-commerce you know, two months down the track, then I recommend just going month to month or even three months but you're gonna save a little bit more money if you go for a longer term, okay? So that's really up to you, but I personally recommend the 12. Here you need to enter in a username and also security pin. So I've already got a few accounts with HostGator, so I'm just gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to do everything here. Scrolling down here, you gotta enter in your billing information and credit card details, and you can also pay via PayPal if you have a PayPal account. Okay, so pause the video and fill that in. And then once you've done that, scroll down. And here, this will be automatically selected and it's included for free. It will basically give you the HTTPS in front there and also the lock icon. This is important because you'll be collecting the customer's data on your website and that helps secure it. So for the site lock monitoring, we're gonna deselect that, okay? So as you can see, it's recommended, but you can actually secure your website with some free plugins. So once your website gets you know, a lot of visitors, then you can opt for that as well, or you can just get that up front. Okay, it really depends on your situation. For the site backup and also the email, we're gonna deselect these two because you can do that for free as well with some free plugins. I've also got a tutorial on my channel to set up um, this on your website, okay? Your own email at your own domain name.com, okay? We're gonna scroll down here and for the coupon code, we're gonna enter in shop now, N-O-W, and then click on validate. And that's gonna bring your total down a little bit, okay? So as you can see, it's gonna take uh, the billing cycle here, okay? It's gonna reduce it by 40%, okay? So it's gonna save you a little bit more money. And if you do use that, I may get a small commission, but it actually helps you save some money and it helps me to keep creating these free tutorials for you guys and I really appreciate it. Okay, so scrolling down here, you're gonna see all the um, prices. Okay, so $6, $64 and also the domain. Make sure that is all correct. And the total comes to $90, okay? So probably a little more than $7 per month. Okay, but that's amazing because you can get started you know, with your own e-commerce website for less than $100, I think that's a really good deal. Um, you don't have to pay a developer to set everything up for you, you can do it yourself. Okay, so we're gonna scroll down here and select your red and agreed, and then click on check out now. Okay, so after you've purchased your domain name and also hosting account, then you should get an email that looks similar to this. Okay, so what you need to look for is your control panel URL, and then click it. And you'll need to copy over your username and also your password and paste it into here to log in. Okay, so click on login and we're gonna be installing WordPress onto our website. So to do that, look for build a new WordPress website on the top here. Um, if you can't find it, 
um, try to look for quick install. Okay, so click on quick install and then click on installing WordPress. Okay, so we're going to click on build a new WordPress website. And here you need to select the domain that you want to install it on. Okay, so I'm going to select the one that I just bought. So as you can see, I've got quite a few. Make sure to select the correct one. Leave the directory part empty. Otherwise, if you, you know, add something like WordPress onto it, it's going to install the WordPress onto yourwebsite.com slash WordPress. Okay, so you want it to install it on the main domain URL. Okay, and then click on next. Here you can enter in the blog title and you can change it later. I'm just going to type in logo admin username. So this is the username that we're going to log into the dashboard of WordPress with. Okay, put in your first name, last name, and make sure to put in a valid email address because they'll also be sending the login details and password to this email here. And then click on you've agreed and then click on install. So WordPress is going to take, you know, a few seconds to install onto your website. Okay, so you should be greeted with a installation as completed. And what you can do now is what I like to do is copy over the password first. Okay, so they're also going to send you these details to your email address. Sometimes it might end up in the spam. And then what you can do is if you actually open that link in a new tab, sometimes your website might not be up yet because it takes time for HostGator to actually set up your website on the back end. So you might need to wait 15, 20 minutes, worst case scenario, two to three hours. If it's up, it looks something like this. And to log in, you can click on admin login here, or you can type in forward slash WP dash admin, and then click on enter. And that will take you to the WordPress login page where you actually log into your WordPress website. Okay, so what I recommend is actually bookmarking it to your browser. So enter in the username and paste in the password here. Okay, and then click on login. So we're gonna close that. And this is your WordPress dashboard. It might look a little bit overwhelming now, but it's not really that hard. So I'm gonna show you what the website looks like right now. And your website looks very, very plain. So this is the default sort of theme that comes with it. Um, we're going to be installing some plugins and some themes to customize the website right now. Okay, so the first thing I would recommend you do is if you actually see an update available, then you can click on update now. Um, if not, you know, just leave it as is here. Uh, make sure that it is updated. Okay, everything seems updated. I'm going to scroll down here to the users and then you can click on all users. So what we're going to do here is actually set in a new password because we can't really remember that really long password there. This section here, you can also add in additional users. For example, if you want someone to manage your store, you can add in a new user here. And here, click on edit, scroll down, click on generate password and click on hide. And here, try to enter in a password with some uppercase and some other letters. And then click on update profile, okay, to save that password. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is change the permalinks. So for example, if we actually go and open our website in a new tab again, this is the default post. And if you click into that, you'll see that the URL structure is, you know, a bit weird. So it's got .php and then got the date and then it's got the post title. So what you want to do is you want to go back here to settings and click on permalinks. And you want to make sure the permalink structure is just the post name or the page name. Okay, so it's a much cleaner appearance and it's better for the search engine. So click on post name and then save changes. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is click on plugins. So by default, WordPress actually has some, you know, default plugins and plugins are basically applications that add extra functionality to your WordPress website. For example, sometimes, you know, on your, on your phone, by default, it's got some default apps installed. And what I generally like to do is, you know, get everyone on the same page. So we're going to deactivate everything. Okay, so select all 
and then you can actually click on deactivate first and apply and then select all again and then we're going to delete everything so you can install them later and I'll show you how to install some plugins later as well okay so once that is done click on pages as well so by default it will have a sample page okay and this one here select all and move it to trash apply now okay click on trash and select all delete permanently and apply click on post so by default it will have a hello world post we're going to delete that as well okay move to trash or you can click on trash here and then we're going to click on trash again and delete permanently okay so now uh, if you go to the dashboard you'll see that it has a much cleaner appearance okay so you got all the default settings here you can actually close everything up here I'll be showing you how to do everything step by step and now what we need to do is install the theme so if you actually hover over appearance click on themes here is the default theme 2017 okay so we're going to add a new theme so click on add new and here are some free themes that you can use but a lot of them are actually freemium so to actually get the full features of the theme you'll need to you know pay for them but i actually have the theme that i use down in the description below so make sure to click show more and then it will show the download links to download the theme and once you've downloaded it it should look something like this themify-shop.zip and also download the plugin as well build a woocommerce and you can also download the images so you can follow exactly like how i'm doing in the actual video tutorial okay so download those three things onto your computer sometimes the themify uh, shop theme might automatically unzip if you're using safari and it might look like for example if i double click it it might look something like this okay a folder so what you need to do is right click and make sure to compress that back into the zip file for the images you can unzip it so for uh, for Mac users you just double click and it will actually open up like that okay and the images to follow along are in here so what we need to do is go back to the dashboard and click on upload themes choose files and you'll need to upload the themify dash shop.zip file and click on open and install the progress bar is down on the left bottom left and once that is done you will need to activate the theme by clicking on here and then what you need to do is sometimes the skins and demos might pop up okay you'll need to click on the cross um, button okay so we're not going to upload any skins and demos we're going to be using the default theme layout so if you actually visit our site now then you'll see that the appearance has changed it lot, looks a lot cleaner and it looks very similar to what we're going to create very soon so basically what we need to do now is to add some extra functionality to our wordpress website so by default it is a blogging and sort of a small business website like as it is right now but if you actually add some plugins then it can turn into an e-commerce store so we need to click on plugins okay so the first plugin that i recommend you download and activate is the really simple ssl okay because as you can see the website is probably showing not secure if it is showing secure then you know don't worry about it then you don't need this plugin okay and sometimes if you don't have an ssl certificate you haven't purchased one you might have followed another tutorial you don't have ssl certificate you don't have to worry about this step okay so for everyone else click on add new and type in really simple ssl okay so this will basically force the ssl on your website and it'll give you the secure icon if you've actually purchased it okay so click on install now and then you'll need to activate it so here you need to click on go ahead and activate ssl okay and that is probably going to log you out of your website if you click on visit website right now it's going to log you out so as you can see you'll see the https 
And now to log back in, you can type in forward slash WP dash admin. Okay. And then click on enter. And then that will take you back to the WordPress dashboard. Okay. So enter in your uh, username and also your password and then click on login. And then I'm going to show you how to install the rest of the plugins. Okay. So go back to plugins and then click on add new. So the first plugin that we want to install is the builder WooCommerce. So upload plugin, choose file and download and also install this plugin here. Okay. So it's in the description below open and install now and then click on activate. The next plugin that we're going to download is the product filter plugin. Okay. So we're going to search here for themify products filter. Okay. And then this is the plugin that we want to install and then click on install now. And you can click on activate, but I don't think it'll actually activate because we don't have the WooCommerce actually installed yet. Okay. So you might need to come back and activate this. Okay. Which I'll show you in a second. Okay. So the next plugin we're going to download is contact form seven. Okay. So that's going to allow people to actually contact you through a contact form without, you know, sending you an email. People can, you know, get to you straight away with the contact form seven. So search for that here. And then this one is by Takayuki. Okay. And then click on install now and then activate. Okay. And then click on add new again. The last plugin is the WooCommerce plugin. Okay. So the reason why we're going to install this last is because we're going to go through the setup wizard together. Okay. So search for WooCommerce and this one should have over a million installations and then click on install now and you can download and use a lot of plugins so you can search them search them up here or you can try and search it up on google so there's a lot of free and also paid plugins that you can use to add extra functionality but these are the ones that we're going to be using right now and then activate it okay so that normally will take you to the woocommerce setup wizard and we're going to go through this right now so where is your store based? I'm going to set in Australia. Okay. And then put in a dummy address. Okay. So if you don't want to put in your personal address, what I recommend you guys do is maybe just, you know, put in a dummy one right now, or you can get a PO box, which isn't that expensive. Okay. Um, I'm going to put in Melbourne and then we're going to put in, you know, Victoria 3000 and this is the currency here. Okay. So you can select the currency that you're going to accept the payments in. I'll just leave it as Australian, but you might be us, UK or something else. So here, if you'll be selling, you know, products um, and services in person as well, make sure you tick this and then click on let's go. Okay. So here you can actually um, select the payment options. So if you want to accept payment through Stripe, then keep this selected, but I'll be showing you how to set it up using PayPal. PayPal is really easy. So if you don't have a PayPal account, make sure to sign up right now. I'm also going to go through the settings a little bit later as well. Okay. So I'm going to deselect Stripe for now and just leave PayPal as is. And you can also click on this and make sure you have your email in here. So your PayPal email. And once people actually purchase, the payment will be sent to the PayPal account associated with the email that you put in here. Scroll down and click on here. You can also enable these options as well if you want to. So I'll show you how to configure them or where to configure them later as well. Okay. So click on that and then click on continue. Okay. So for your shipping. Okay. So I'll be going through this a little bit later as well. So for example, uh, the shipping zone is called Australia. And here you can set in flat rate shipping and also free shipping as well. So let's say flat rate is $10, then you can put in 10. So locations not covered, then you can also set in a rate here as well. So for example, if it's, let's say in the United States, um, it's not, you know, set in here. So you can put in a rate here. Okay. So for all 
locations, which is not set here, it's $20. Okay, so I'll be showing you more detail later. Okay, here you can select the weight unit and dimensions and then click on continue. Okay, so what I recommend is keeping these two checked. Okay, so this one is really good because it's going to automatically help you calculate your taxes in the checkout section. Okay, and MailChimp is basically sort of a email marketing software um, and you can sign up for free. Okay, so I'll be showing you how to connect this in another bonus video. Okay, so for now, just click on continue and that's going to install the automated taxes and MailChimp for you. So it's going to take a few seconds. Okay, so here it's going to say connect your store to Jetpack. Okay, so here, so here, click on continue with Jetpack. Okay, and then here, um, click on continue with Google or you can sign up uh, your new email here. Okay, so I'm going to click on continue with Google and create a uh, Jetpack account. Okay, so I'm going to be using a new email, this one here. And then that's going to connect that email to my Jetpack account. And that normally takes a few moments as well. Okay, so you should be ready to start selling, right? Here, you can actually create a product by clicking here, but I'll be showing you how to do a few things first. Okay, you've also got additional videos by clicking on this. Okay, so you can click on that. But what we're going to do now is visit our dashboard and we're going to add in some pages. Okay, so we're going to add some pages for our e-commerce website. All right, so what we're going to do now is click on pages. Okay, so WooCommerce actually has created some, you know, e-commerce pages for us. For example, the cart page, checkout pages, and the shop and account pages. But we need to create our own page. Okay, so we're going to create and click on add new. And the first page we're going to create is our home page. Okay, so just type in home in the title section up here. Click on publish. And then we're going to click on add new again. We're going to add in our about page. And then we're going to add new again. Okay, so you can create as many pages as you want. So I'm just going to create the pages which I'll be showing you how to create uh, later on. So contact. And we're also going to be creating a wish list and a blog and also a FAQ page. So click on add new. Here we're going to type in blog, publish. Add new again. Okay, it's a little bit boring, a little bit repetitive, but uh, we've got to get this stuff done. And type it in here, wish list, we're going to delete that. And then click on publish. Then we're going to create our FAQ page, sorry. And, um, you know, you could actually, you know, create a shipping uh, and returns page if you want to, but I'm just going to name it FAQ. Okay, and then click on publish. Okay, so I'm going to close these tabs up top first. Okay, so we're going to click on all pages here to make sure that we've actually created all those pages. Okay, so about, home, contact, FAQ. Okay, that looks about right. If you haven't, then click on add new again. Okay, so we're going to click on visit website and check our website. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the menu up here. So what we need to do is actually set in our menu navigation area first. Um, so what we need to do is we need to click on customize and it's automatically going to take you to themify options here. You want to click on the back and you want to click on homepage settings. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to set a static page. Okay, so for the home page, you want to set the static page to your actual home page that you just created. Okay, so for example, if we take this URL, okay, let's open a new tab, paste that in, and go to our home page that we just created before. So we want this home page here to be just you know our domain URL. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. Okay, so set in home and then click on publish. 
and that will basically set that in okay and then you can go back here okay and then click on menus okay and now we're going to create our menu so as you can see you've got the hamburger menu right so uh, this is the uh, mobile menu this is what it looks like on mobile devices and the reason for this is because the screen size right now is quite small so it's showing the mobile menu so what you can do is in your browser there's three icons up here normally okay if you're using chrome click it and you can zoom out a little bit to 90 percent and you'll see your menu up here okay so once you've done that click on create a new menu and for the menu name up here we're going to name it top nav okay so for top navigation it doesn't matter what you name it um, this is just for your own reference for your menu location, you want to set it to the main location, uh, main navigation, sorry, up here. Click on next. And you want to add in the pages that you want to display on the top. All right. Click on add items. And the page that I want to display is just my shop page. So I just want my shop page to display on the top here. You can add your about, your blog, and contacts and FAQ on the top. But generally, let's say if you go to the iconic okay so this is a popular e-commerce website in australia you know they normally just have the categories and stuff up here and down here they've got all the other faq pages and about pages and things like that okay because for an e-commerce website the main priority is to actually um, convert people and you sort of want to make the navigation really nice and simple um, to navigate okay well, i'll be showing you how to create the mega menu and different things like that later but maybe just set in, but just set in the shop page for now and click on publish. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is we're gonna create another menu. So click on the back and create a new menu. Uh, this time we're gonna create a menu for our footer section. So we're gonna name this footer nav and select the footer navigation. Click on next. And here you can click on add items Okay, so for your footer, I want to display my, let's say, the FAQ page, the blog page, the contact page, the about page. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, not going to select these ones. Okay, so to rearrange it, you can just click it and drag it like that to rearrange the order. So as you can see on the bottom right here, you'll see the order. So I'm going to rearrange it. I think that's fine. If you want to create like a drop down menu, you can actually just click it and drag it inwards. So when people actually hover over about, then it's actually going to drop down. Okay, so normally this is useful for the top navigation, but that's how you actually do it. And then once you've done that, then click on publish. And then you can actually just close it. Now what we're going to do is as you can see for the page layout, you've got this home here and you've also got a sidebar section. We want a blank canvas so we can create, you know, our hero section, okay, for our website. We don't want, you know, the title and the sidebar here. So to remove it, you can actually go back to dashboard section. And then you want to go to themify shop, themify settings. Okay? And you want to click on default layouts. So this settings area, you can edit the theme. Okay, so I'll be showing you how to customize everything later. But for now, click on default page layout. And if we actually open the site in a new tab, then this is the title, this is the sidebar. We want to remove sidebar and hide the title. Okay, and also I don't want to display the page comment, so I'm going to disable it, okay, for the pages only. Click on save on the top and then if we actually go back here and refresh the page then you have a blank canvas where you can actually build the layout of your e-commerce store so the layout we're going to be creating is a hero image which goes all the way across just like the one that you see on apple and i'm going to show you how to add text and a button or a link okay for example nike you've got a really nice hero image and the reason why websites do this is because it basically works, right? It tells the visitor exactly what you're selling, what your site is about, and people can determine whether or not they wanna 
stay on your website or click off your website. So this part of the tutorial is really important because we're basically creating sort of the landing page, the first impression, the signage of your business. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use the builder and how to um, actually apply text and add in a button, right? So what we're gonna do is a really good place to actually find um, some images if you don't have one already is a website called unsplash.com. Okay, so obviously if you're an e-commerce store, I highly recommend probably getting a photographer if you're not good with you know photos and stuff like that to take some really high quality and relevant product images because I think really good images is what really separates you from you know the rest of the other e-commerce stores. Okay, but if you don't have an image right now, then you know what I suggest is maybe you can go to Unsplash. For example, if you type in shoes, then you know you have pictures of really high quality um, images of shoes, right? And then what you could do is you could download these and you can use them for your website for commercial and also for personal projects without crediting people, okay? So download that onto your computer and what you need to do next is you need to actually go to photo.com, okay? So you can actually use Photoshop or any other photo editing software, but we need to actually edit the images before we sort of, um, you know, we, need, we upload it onto our website, okay? The reason for that is because you want to resize it, otherwise it's too big and it takes too long to load. All right, so for example, let's find an image. For example, let's say this one here, you download that to your computer, okay? And save it onto your desktop or create a new folder and go back to photo. You can click on open, click on computer and upload that image onto photo.com, okay? Click on skip all tutorials. Here is your image, right? And here is the size of the image on the bottom here. Okay, and that's really, really large. And we sort of want to crop it down. Okay, so to do that, you can click on resize and make sure this thing is selected. Okay, and then I'm going to type in 1600. Okay, for the width of the image. And here, the height is automatically going to resize. Okay, and then click on apply. So type that properly, click on apply, and that will resize here. Okay. So you can zoom in and then you can actually crop it further. So you can click on crop. And here I'm gonna type in 1,600 times about 900 in, in height, okay? And then I'm going to select where I sort of wanna crop it. I think there is pretty nice, okay? And then click on apply. Okay, so the image that I wanna actually upload is 1,600 width times about 900 in height. Okay, so I personally think that is ideal for a hero image. And once you've done that, you can click on save. I think you might need to actually sign in with your Facebook account, okay? Um, I think you used to be able to actually download for free, but I think now you have to, you know, create a free account. So you can create an account and download that image onto your computer, okay? And once you've done that, go back to your website here. And what I generally like to do is refresh the page first. Okay, before I turn on the builder. So what we're gonna do now is turn on the builder and basically this will pop up. We're gonna click on the close because I'll show you how to edit everything, okay? So when you actually hover over this section here, you've got a purple sort of outline and also a orange outline. The purple outline is basically the outline for the row, so the width. The orange outline is the column settings. So you can actually change the columns. So you can select two columns, okay, like that. Or you can select, you know, three columns, something like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna select this one, default. Okay, so what I wanna do is hover over here and click on the options tab. Okay, so you can click on that or you can actually, you know, select the width for width here. Okay, but I'll actually click on that. And then for the row width, you want it to go all the way across. Okay, so full width row content. And then you can click on the styling tab. Okay, click on background. And you can upload an image, gradient, video, and also a slider. Okay, so for a video, what I recommend is actually uploading the video to YouTube first. And then what you can do is you can actually paste in the video URL. Okay, once you've actually uploaded the video to YouTube. 
you can paste it in here and the video will actually start playing in the background. Okay, but for this tutorial, we're going to be adding in a slider. So I'm going to delete that video. Okay, and then click on insert gallery. And what I want to do is I want to upload files, select files and images ready. So these are the images that we're going to be using for the website. So instead of, you know, uploading one by one, um, when we're actually doing stuff, I'm just going to, you know, select all. Okay, just drag and then select all and then open. Okay, I'm going to upload all the images to our WordPress website so we can just easily select the images when we need it. Okay, so that's going to take a few minutes because that's quite a lot of images. I'm going to close all these tabs up top first. Okay, let's close all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this one here. So I'm going to select it. Okay, select the this blue shoe. Select this one here and here, here and here and here. Okay, so I'm going to select these uh, six images. So over here, I'm going to actually deselect the other ones. Okay, so just click on it and deselect it. And I'm going to select these six images. Okay, so keep in mind how many images you actually upload. The more images for your slider, the sort of more slowly your website's going to load. So I personally think, you know, three or four images pretty much enough, okay, for your slider. But I've got six, so I'm just going to add to gallery for now. So this one here is not the hero slider. As you can see, I've cropped it to about 1,600 times 900. You can crop it to anywhere, you know, around this size. It doesn't have to be exact, but this is the size that I've cropped it at, okay? Click on update, and that will add the images to your slider. Right, for the image size, we're going to select a uh, original image and background slider mode should be full cover. Here you can set in the slider speed, uh, but as you can see, you can't really see that image, right? So what you need to do is add some spacing within that image. Okay, so to do that, you can click on padding and click on this all button. Okay, and we're going to type in 15%, okay, to the top. So it's going to add 15% uh, spacing to the top and you can do 15% for the bottom. So that's going to add 15% to the bottom. Okay. So padding is something that you're going to be using all the time because, uh, you need to add space to your website for everything basically. Okay. So if it's not enough, you can just click it and you can drag it up to, let's say 17%, click it and drag it up to 17. And then once you've done that, you can click on done. Okay, the reason why it's not stretched out fully is because we're going to be adding some text in here. So it's going to stretch out a little bit more. So over here, the green icon, hover over it. Um, you can click on the lock to sort of lock it in there. So we're going to add some text. Okay, so drop in a text module. For the text content, I'm going to be just pasting in multi purpose e commerce. Okay, so this is a demo website which I just created. You can actually visit this website because by the time you watch this tutorial, it'll be completed. Okay, so you can come here and just copy the text that we're going to be using. Whenever we're pasting text from some other place, uh, what I like to do is uh, right click and paste and match style or paste as plain text. Okay, because you don't want to keep that styling. So as you can see, it's multi purpose e commerce. So here I'm going to select it and then I'm going to set this to heading one. So now what we're going to do is click on done. Okay. And then we're going to add in another text module. Okay. So a sub headline, right? We're going to add a sub headline. So to do that, you can either hover over here and drop in another text module, or you can hover over the original one. And on the right here, you can actually duplicate. Okay. So that duplicates the text. Click on the bottom row here and then change this to your subheadline. So your subheadline could be like 50% off sale or something about, you know, what you're selling. So if you go to Gymshark, let's have a look. Okay, it's swimwear time. Um, I don't know, it's really up to you. Okay, for, for this one, we're gonna be just creating um, an online store. So we're gonna put in that title there and paste and match style. So as you can see, that's set to heading one, okay, because it's duplicated, select paragraph, and then click on done. And then what we're going to do is add a button. Okay, so a button is here and drag it below that and drop it in. 
Okay, you, you can select different size buttons, small, large, extra large, um, different shape, different background. And here you can put in the button text. So what we're gonna do is link it to our shop page, right? So we're gonna do shop now, or you can link it to a individual product page. So for your link, so where do you want this button to link to, right? So I'm gonna link it to our shop page. So what we're gonna do is you can hover over shop here, right click, and then you can copy that link address, okay? So paste your URL here, and that's gonna to link to the shop. Okay, you can paste in a direct sort of page, like for example, if you wanna link it to a about page, you can uh, right click the about and copy link address, or you can link it to a product as well. And right now, you can set in the color to be black. Okay, so you can change the color here. And if you wanna add in another button, you can. If you wanna change the styling, like a different color, um, other than the default ones here, go to styling tab, and then click on button, background, and then you can set in the background color, and the background hover over color, and also the link colors here, okay? So here, we're going to just click on done. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to style it. So how do, I, how do we actually change the color and how do we align the text so it's not like too much on the side? So what you can do is you can actually click on the styling tab, styling options here for the row, okay? And then what you can do is you can click on font and then you're gonna change the color to white. Okay, so what that does is it changes the font color everything inside that row to white, okay? So if, for example, if you move this text down to a new row, okay, drop it there, okay, that's gonna be black, okay, because the styling it has only applied to what you've set in for the row, not for the individual module, okay? So if you wanna, you know, set in the individual module, you can double click, styling, font, and then here you can change the color, right? Okay, so I'm gonna delete it, click on done. You can also click on undo. And that's gonna sort of undo the changes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it inwards a little bit, okay? So what you can do is you can, um, instead of going to the styling here, you can just double click, and that will also take you to the row options as well, okay? Go to styling, go to padding, and we wanna add some spacing to the left-hand side. So hover over here, left, and then set in 5%, okay? And then that's gonna, you know, add some spacing to the left, right? So you can also click on fonts, you can also align it to, you know, your, your text to the center like that. And you can also align it to the right, okay, depending on what you want. So I'm gonna keep it on the left. So it really depends on, you know, your image, right? Um, you can also hover over here, you can also change the number of columns to this one here, to the one like that. And then for example, you can actually move the text to the middle, okay? Middle column, like that. Okay, so here you can also sort of drag it. Okay, so you can change the width of the, the columns. So it's really fun um, when you actually learn the basics of how to actually change the layout and stuff like that. But what we're gonna do is just undo everything and move it back like that. Okay, then click on save and then we can close it. Okay, so everything's looking very good except there's some space here. To edit the space, click on edit page and scroll down to Themify custom panel. For the content width, you want to select full width. Okay, so for any page you wanna add a hero image and there's some spacing, then you need to get rid of that spacing by selecting full width and updating that page. And then once you've done that, you can go back to your home page. Okay, so you can click on view page and that space should be gone. Okay, so what you've done is you've created a really nice hero image, just like the one that you see on Gymshark, Apple, uh, Gucci, and that's looking really, really awesome. Okay, so if you actually wanna change the font here to maybe, it's a bit too small, right? So turn on the builder again. 
and double click the text module, okay? Go to styling and then go to font and here you can change the font size. You can also drag this module to the right hand side and it'll lock just like that. And then you can click on font, font size, maybe 24. I think that looks okay, I guess. So what I recommend right now is to keep your your font family, like the fonts and everything as just as default, okay? Because I'll be showing you how to actually, you know, change the fonts and the colors later on. What we're doing now is sort of just building out the structure of your website, and then we're gonna sort of paint it later, all right? And then click on done. Click on save. Now I'm gonna close it, and the next part I'm gonna show you how to add in your products. And before that, I'm gonna show you three places where you can actually get you know, and source your products from if you don't actually have products. But if you do, then you can skip this part. Hey guys, it's Hogan here. Hopefully I didn't scare you because I was behind the camera and now I'm in front of the camera. But I do wanna explain sort of the three ways that you can actually source your products. So the first way is to actually source your products from aliexpress.com. And the method that you're gonna use is a method called dropshipping. So I'm not sure how familiar you are with the topic, but what dropshipping means is basically you are listing someone else's product, okay, on your website, and then you're promoting your website, and then the customer will actually go to your website and purchase that, okay? And then what you'll do is you'll actually order that product from the supplier or the vendor, and the vendor will actually ship directly to the customer. So essentially you don't have to you know, buy thousands and thousands of dollars of stock and store it in your own house or a warehouse or anything like that. You basically will actually place the order after the customer has paid you, right? So this is a method called drop shipping and a lot of people use AliExpress for drop shipping because the products here are from Chinese vendors, okay? So normally products on Amazon and eBay, they are um, people like us you know, who actually buy the product from China, let's say, and they import it into the country and then they start distributing it. So normally the prices are cheaper, but there is a drawback in terms of the shipping times, okay? So normally products take two to three weeks to get shipped and even longer um, if the um, vendor doesn't offer e-packet to that specific country. But um, what I recommend is actually when you're actually drop shipping is to start off with countries that actually have e-packet shipping because that's only going to take about two weeks for your customer to get the product okay so what you want to do is you want to go to aliexpress.com and then you can browse the products um, you can research the products and you'll see that the products normally have reviews okay so you want to find high quality products um, check the reviews check the images that customers actually post on the actual product because you want to make sure it's a quality product that's going to decrease the returns and you know keep your customers happy right so what i do recommend is actually um, ordering that product for yourself so you can actually test that product yourself you know see if it actually works um, before you start you know listing the product on your website okay so to actually list the product on your website you can do it um, you know in two methods the first method is you can do it manually which is um, you'll actually need to screenshot the images and save the images onto your computer. And then you'll need to basically upload the images onto your website, which I'm about to show you. And you'll have to set in the prices yourself, you know, add in the product description and basically set in everything that you need by yourself. Or the second method, which is the one I recommend is to use a plugin um, called Ali Dropship. And Ali Dropship will basically help you sort of uh, do a one-click import of the product onto your website, okay? So it saves a lot of time um, because you don't have to go about screenshotting the images. It will actually copy the images um, directly to your website and it also takes the inventory number, like it tracks the inventory as well. So you don't have to worry about, you know, maybe that vendor actually runs out of the product and then customers are still ordering. It will actually sort of um, sync that together so that won't happen, okay? So after the, the customer actually purchases the product from your website, then what it does is that it will take the customer's um, shipping information and it will automatically log into the website to place the order with that supplier specifically. And then it'll actually set in the customer's shipping address 
And then all you need to do is to um, pay by your credit card or your PayPal account, and then the supplier will ship directly to the customer, okay? So this is the method called drop shipping, and this is something that you can start today with a really low investment. But personally, I don't believe this is the best uh, long-term business model. It's sort of like riding a bicycle, right? So drop shipping is sort of like riding a bicycle with training wheels. You sort of want to learn about e-commerce um, by doing drop shipping because it's low investment. Um, you can learn about Facebook ads, Instagram ads. You can learn about sourcing the products and you know customer service and all that stuff. But what you want to do is you want to build a long-term brand. You want to have your own product with your own logo and own packaging, okay? So to do that, you go to a website called alibaba.com, okay? And here you can actually um, get in touch with the manufacturers. So it's a little bit different, you know, on AliExpress, uh, it's like the vendors, okay? Um, but if you actually go to Alibaba, it's actually the manufacturers who, who actually, um, you know, assemble and build that product. So you can actually put your own logo, put your own packaging and stuff like that, okay? So what I recommend is you will do need quite a lot of money um, if you actually want to invest in it. But, you know, I don't know your financial situation, but it's going to be, you know, roughly, I'd say more than $5,000 because you actually need to order the product, but then you actually have to pay for the shipping to, to your home country. Okay. So normally the best companies will actually have a higher um, minimum order quantity, but you can order samples and you'll have to probably pay for the samples and actually pay for the shipping as well. Okay, so make sure you order samples and what you can actually do is you can actually ask the, the manufacturers is do they actually, um, you know, produce a product for maybe a country, uh, a, a, sorry, a company in your country, right? Last time when I asked them, they actually told me, you know, who they supplied and they actually gave me sort of an estimate of how many um, pieces that that company is actually ordering. So when you actually talk to them, you can ask them all this information, you know, sometimes they might not tell you, but sometimes they do. And when you actually know that, then it gives you the confidence to actually begin. Because if you can sort of reverse engineer what other companies are doing, you know, you can actually use a website called similarweb.com and then you can put the actual e-commerce website that you, that you are inspired by put it in there and then you can check their traffic and where is it coming from, okay? So then you can analyze and reverse engineer basically the marketing strategy for that company for your own success, for your own uh, e-commerce website, okay? The third method is actually going to the Canton Fair. So I went to the Canton Fair last year for the October one. So there's normally two different uh, sort of uh, time uh, sessions, okay, per year and separated into three uh, phases, okay? So they separate into three phases because there's so many different product categories. Um, and I think it's a really great experience because you can actually touch, you can feel, and you can talk to the, um, the manufacturers as well. So I think a lot of people might have a bad perception about products made in China as well. But when you actually go there, when I went there, I talked to a, a manufacturer that did the stuff for Starbucks. So they are really high quality suppliers there. You know, even Apple, um, have their iPhones made in China, right? They have, you know, designed in California, but assembled in China. And, you know, a lot of the companies that you see now on Instagram, they have their products from Alibaba and, you know, they, they source it from uh, suppliers in like the Canton Fair as well. So I recommend going there. Um, if you want more information, then you can check out the Canton Fair website. You probably need a Chinese visa and you need to get like a, like a registration sort of thing as well, but that's pretty easy to get. And then you just book the hotel, book a flight, and then you're there, okay? So right now I'm gonna jump back into my screen and actually show you how to add in the products. So let's get into it. So let's set in some products. The first product I'm gonna show you how to set in is just a simple product, all right? So if you're not in the dashboard section already, make sure to click on the home icon and that will take you back here. Click on products. Okay, here you can click on create your first product or um, you can click on add new if you see that button there, okay? For the product title, we're gonna set in a black dress. So I'm gonna show you how to set everything up so you can click on dismiss, okay? So black dress. Here is where you paste in your long description. 
So let's say, for example, this is the black dress we're going to be adding in. Okay, the long description we pasted here. Okay, so this is where you write a little bit more about the product itself. All right, and this is the short description. So I'm going to grab some lorem ipsum text as just some placeholder text for now. Okay, so here I'm going to just copy a paragraph and paste it in. Okay, so you can click on the toggle toolbar and here you can change the color of the text and you can edit the text. Okay, scroll down here, okay, to the product data. So we're going to be creating just a simple product for now. And this product is a physical product, so make sure this is unselected. And for the regular price, we'll do $79. You can also set in a sale price. So let's say, for example, $59. And you can also schedule it. Okay, so you can schedule it from a date to end and to end on a certain date as well. Okay, click on inventory. Here, if you have a lot of products, you can have a SKU. And you can also manage the stock level by ticking this. And for example, you might have only 10 left. And then you can put that in. Whoops, 10. And allow back orders, you know, that depends on you. So for example, if your stock quantity actually goes below zero, then orders will be still allowed. Okay, for now, we're going to select do not allow. Click on shipping. And here you can enter in the product dimension, like how much uh, does it weigh um, when it comes in someone's mailbox or something like that. So it might weigh, you know, one kilo, um, might be 30 centimeters times 30 times a height of maybe three centimeters. Okay, you can click on linked products. So upsells are basically if you actually search for a product here, if you've added more products, you can search for a product and the upsell will actually appear sort of below the product. So for me, I normally leave it empty because uh, it'll actually show related products, which is the products in the same category. Okay, so for cross sales, I think this is really useful. So let's say, for example, you are selling a dress, right? So maybe in a cross sell would be some necklaces or some, you know, some gym jewelry, right? So if people actually add that to cart, right? And if people view that cart, then basically they'll recommend the cross sell product that you set in here. Okay, so you can increase the value of the cart by adding some cross sells. Okay, so for example, if you have a camera, a cross sell would be, you know, camera batteries and stuff like that. Attributes is something that you do for variable products and advanced. So you can leave a purchase note. You can also order the products on the shop page. Okay, and you can also enable or disable reviews. I'm going to paste in the short description. Okay, and delete some text for now. Scroll back up here. Here you can set in a product category. So click on add new. And this is a women's dress. So I'm going to actually set in a parent category. So this is the sort of the, the main category. So for example, if you go to Gymshark, right, they have uh, women's and men's. So they have women's and then they have women's leggings and stuff like that. So this one is you have women, okay, women's ad, and then you also is a dress. So you type in dress, okay. And then for the parent category, select women's. So if you add new category, dress will be under the women's category as well. Okay, so this helps for when you're actually setting in your mega menu. Okay, when you're actually setting in your mega menu here, then it helps with this and it also helps with people searching for the product in the search engines as well. Okay, so once you've actually done that, for the product tags, you might do, you know, the brand of dress or maybe the material and stuff like that okay so you can disable the sharing if you want to for the product image click on set product image and if you haven't uploaded the images yet click on upload file and select files but here i'm going to upload this one here okay and what i actually recommend is cropping the image as well okay so this one is 800 by 800 okay so it's sort of like a square so 800 width times 800 in height so if, for example, your product is more of a, a longer type of product, like this one here, then you might consider 600 in width, okay, and 800 in height. But for all your product images, make sure they are exactly the same size, so they aren't cropped, okay, so they're all, you know, matching perfectly. 
And what I do recommend is having a white background or a neutral background like this. Okay, so then the background is sort of like gray. Same with Nike as well. Okay, their background is white, right? So it's a lot cleaner. You know, sometimes I've seen a lot of people actually have white background, gray background, and then, you know, they might have um, the, the product in a, like a colored background. That's gonna make your website load slower and also looks more unprofessional, okay? So for your featured image, make sure it keep it white, okay? And then set in the product image. So the product gallery is where you can actually add the product in use. So this girl here, you might have her in like, you know, in a, in a photo shoot somewhere in the alleyway or something in the dress with the dress, okay? So you might add the extra product gallery images here. Okay, but for your product image, the featured image, leave it as neutral as you can. Okay, and once you've done that, then you can just press on publish. Okay, so once that is done, you can click on view products or the URL here. So click onto that. And that is looking pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is how to add in a variable product. Okay, so sometimes you might have a black dress and then you might have different sizes and different colors so I'm going to show you how to set that in so what you can do you can also click on add new hover over it sorry and click on products that's just a shortcut okay to add in pages or post um, that's a quick way of getting to where you want quickly okay so the next product is going to be a jumper okay so I'm going to put in jumper here I'm going to paste in the Lorem Ipsum again and I'm going to scroll right down to the short description as well. Just paste it in and delete some text. Okay. And then scroll down to the product data. Here you want to select variable product. Okay. It is still a physical product. So we're not going to enable the um, download thing up here. Okay. So it's not appearing right here because you have to set it in individually. So the inventory, you can actually set in the stock level at product level, but we're going to leave that empty. Shipping weight, we can put in one kilo and you know 30 centimeters by 30 by three. For link products, we're going to leave it for now. Attributes is where you have to create the attribute. Okay, so we're going to be adding a jumper. So one of the attributes is maybe a size. So I'm going to click on add. And then what you want to do is type in size. Okay, so here we're going to select S for small. And then we're going to click on shift and I think this one is the backward backward uh, slash it's sort of above the enter button and then that will give you a pipe um, symbol okay and then type in M and then the pipe symbol again L okay and then you can do XL for extra large and whatever you want to do okay make sure to click on use for variations and then click on save and we're going to create another attribute okay so the other attribute will be a different color. Okay, so click on add and name will be color. So we're going to have green and then we're going to do the pipe and then we're going to have gray pipe and also a purple jumper. Okay, and then click on use for variations, save attributes and then click on variations. Here you need to create variations from all the attributes that we created. Click on go and OK. OK. All right, so here you can click on the drop down arrow and here you can select a specific product image for the green variation. OK, so we can click on upload image and we're going to select the green jumper. OK, set variation. And we're going to set in a price here. So for a small one, it might be, let's say $49. Okay. And you can set in the individual stock status and stuff like that here for the individual products, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay. So here you can also set in a downloadable and virtual, but this is a physical. So we're going to scroll down. Okay. Here we're going to select the gray jumper, same price, $49. Scroll down here. We're going to select purple. And this one will be 49. Okay, so I'm gonna do this really quickly. Um, M, so this one is green. The price for this will be 59. Gray, 59. This one is purple. 
59. Scroll down, okay, large. So this one might be 69 and then set in a green jumper. Scroll down, the gray one, 69 and the last one, which is the purple one. Okay, so click on save changes. Okay, scroll back up. Okay, we're gonna click on add new category. So this one is men's jumper. So we're gonna do men's as the parent category. Add new. And then we're gonna do a something called the child category, which is called jumpers. And then set it to be under men's. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to have a parent and child. Um, this is if you sort of have a lot of products and you wanna organize it really well. And click on add new. Okay, so jumpers will be dropping down from men's. Okay, scroll down, product tags. This one might be a cotton jumper or the brand of the jumper. Add, set product image. So this is the featured product image and this is the product that is going to appear on the shop page, okay, here. So we're gonna go here, set that in. And I'm gonna select maybe a, a gray one, okay. Set product image and here you can add additional product images if you need. And let's go and click on publish for now. And we'll make sure to check that product. Okay, so we're going to right click and view it in a new tab. So everything looks good. As you can see the default option, it doesn't select anything. So what you can actually do is set a default option. All right, so go back to your product and go to the product data part. Let's go to variations. And here you can set in the default form values. So I'm gonna set in the default as medium and maybe default as the gray, okay? The gray jumper and then click on update. And then if you refresh that page, then you'll see that the default will be selected, right? And if you actually change the size, for example, small, the price will change, change the color, the product image should change. Okay, so make sure that is all correct because sometimes you might accidentally, you know, mix it up, okay? And everything looks good. Okay, I'll be showing you how to customize the pages and stuff like that later. But now I'm gonna show you how to add in a downloadable product. So we can go and close this and go back here, click on add new. Okay, so this is useful for ebooks or you might have like coaching services or just anything virtual. So for example, we're gonna do here for the title, 50 things to do in Vietnam. Copy some Lauren Ipsum, paste it in here and also down in the short description. Okay, so I'm gonna go over this a little bit quicker. Scroll down to the product data. So this one is gonna be just one product, a simple product but it's gonna be virtual, so it's not shipped and people can download it. Okay, so regular price, $29. Here, you'll need to add the downloadable file. So for example, the, the file that people will be able to download after they've purchased. So you can click on add file, choose file from your computer, and I'm gonna upload this PDF file for them to download. Okay, insert file URL. Okay, you can put in a file name as well. So it could be, you know, 50 things to do in Vietnam. Or you can also, you know, you know, save it your file in like Google Drive or Dropbox and put the file URL over there. So people actually download it from from that URL. Okay, but I was going to use this one. And then you can set in download limit as well as expiry. And then you can click on inventory, you can manage stock, which I don't think is necessary. Link products, you can add in a cross sell. For example, you might have additional sort of um, ebooks and stuff like that. So you've got this one here, and then you've got other ones. So you can add that as a cross sell, and then you can click on attributes. So this is if you have a variable product, advanced, you can leave a purchase note, and then go here. We're gonna click on add new category. We're just gonna name it ebook, okay, just as a just as a normal category up there like that. 
scroll down product tags this one might be Vietnam travel guide add set in a product image and we're gonna select this one here okay and then set in the product image you can add additional gallery images but we're gonna click on publish all right so let's view that product okay so that's looking great okay so let's click on the shop page and what I'm going to show you now is how to add in a product filter okay so this allows your customers to easily sort of filter your products by category by the size by the pricing and stuff like that so let's go back here and to do that I'm going to close this one here let's go to your dashboard section and we need to enable the product filter plugin. Okay, so go to plugins. Make sure you have the Themify WooCommerce product filter installed. Okay, so if you don't, click on add new and then type it in the search bar, install it, and then you'll need to click on activate. And that will activate the plugin. And then on the side of the sidebar section, the product filter tab will actually show up okay so product filters here here you need to click on product filters okay and then you can click on add new and then the form title might be shop page it can be any name and here you can set in the display options so for now i'm just going to leave everything as is except for toggle field groups I'm gonna deselect that. And then here is the things that you wanna display. So for example, I'm gonna put in product title. So this is gonna help people search. Okay, so we're gonna type in search. Below that, we're gonna type in or put in the price. Okay, and that's gonna be as a slider. Then we're gonna put in maybe categories. Okay, and for the display as, I like the radio option. I think it looks a lot better. And then you can scroll back up here. I'm going to put in the on sale on the bottom. So you can play around with the display settings and stuff like that. But I think it is pretty good by default. So we're going to click on save. And then once that is saved, then you can click on close. And then the short code will show up. So you can copy the short code to your clipboard, go to appearance and then click on widgets. So we need to add it onto a sidebar. Okay, so here, okay, click on shop sidebar, and this is where we're gonna drop it in. So here is all the available widgets, so you can actually drop in all these widgets into all these different sections, okay? But what we're gonna do is drop in a text widget, so scroll down to T, click it, and sort of uh, drag and wiggle it up to the top, okay? And then scroll up here, put it in here, and then paste in the short code. Okay, and then click on save. Done. And then you can go back to your store page. And what you actually notice is it's not showing yet. So it's not showing as a sidebar yet. So we need to go back to our dashboard. And we need to actually set that in. So themify shop, themify settings. And then here you want to click on shop settings and you want to click on the product archive and then for the shop page sidebar here as you can see it says no sidebar you want to select it on the left or on the right that depends on you for the product archive sidebar also on the left okay so let's click on save and see how that looks so we're going to visit the store in a new tab and there you go that's really awesome okay so for example let's drag the price filter down then you'll see that it should update and maybe you can click on on sale let's drag that back up and there you go so what we're going to do now is you can actually change the display settings in the shop settings here so for example um, you can display it in uh, in a row of three products Okay, so here it's actually got four products, but you can display it in three. And you can, you know, set in how many products you want per page. 
you can hide the title, you can hide the add to cart, you can play around with the settings here. So for example, let's, let's just hide maybe the product share button, click on save. And you can refresh that. And as you can see, that has disappeared and that's changed to three products in a row. Okay, so what I recommend is just opening this page up, playing around with the settings and figuring out, you know, what you actually like, and then just save it and then refresh this page. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as this for now. And if you actually click into the single product, you can actually go here, okay, go back here to the single product page and you can change the layout as well. Okay, but by default, I think that looks pretty good already. So let's say, for example, you might not want you know the tags kind of looks a little bit ugly so let's go here and you can remove the product tags so hide product tags for the single product and then you can actually save it and then if you refresh then it's going to disappear okay so that makes it look really really clean okay and that looks really good so i'm going to show you how to add in some blog post or some articles for your e-commerce store so I'm gonna actually tell you, you know, why is it actually important for you to add in blog post? So for example, this is your e-commerce website. There's basically two different ways to get traffic to your website. So you can go the free way and you can also do the paid method, which is like Facebook ads, Google AdWords, banner advertising, you know, advertising on TV and things like that. Or you could do free, which is posting images on um, social media accounts like Facebook and Instagram, Snapchat and things like that. But I think, what is underutilized and not many people talk about is actually blogging to get free and targeted traffic to your e-commerce store and have people buy what you are selling, right? So for example, let's just say you are selling wedding dresses and this is a wedding dress, okay? You can actually create content for your target sort of visitors, right? So people who are buying wedding dresses, they're probably searching on Google, maybe things like how to find the perfect wedding dress or you know top 10 tips on you know stuff about the wedding or whatever it is you can create content around it okay and once you actually create content like for example if you go here 11 must read gown shopping tips right people can scroll through your content and you know you can have really good content and you know provide a solution to what they're searching for but you can actually link to let's say your products okay or for example you can actually have your shop page up here and it brings sort of you know awareness to your brand and they're like oh okay this blog also has a shop okay so this is one of the things that you can do like for example nomadic matt actually does that really well so he is primarily a blogger but he also has a shop so he creates really really high quality content about you know how to travel cheaply um tips on you know how to save money while traveling and things like that and then he has a shop page, okay, where he sells eBooks, okay? So, you know, Gymshark also has the same as well. So for example, people might be selling what to wear to the gym and here you'll see the content and then you'll also see that they are linking to their product pages as well, okay? So they're recommending their own products to people who are searching for this keyword on Google. So it's really important to add in uh, blog posts and that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do right now. So to add in a blog post, you can either hover over new and click on post, or you can click back to your dashboard section and you can add the blog post and also view all the blog posts that you have. Okay, so you can hover over here and then you can click on all posts or add new. So all posts is gonna display all your blog posts here and here we can click on add new as well. Okay, here you'll need to enter in your blog post title. So I'm not gonna show you how to write a viral blog post right now because that's gonna be a probably another video and we'll probably need to cover um, search engine optimization as well. But I'm gonna show you how to add it in technically. Okay, so copy the, um, the text there. You can paste that in and let's say I'll just take this text and put it into the title. This is where you add in your blog post. And let's say you want to you want to link it to a product or you want to link it to another page. You can select the text, 
click on the insert and edit link and you can click on the link options and then you can search for your product okay so for example you want to link it to an ebook okay then you can select it here or you could paste in a custom URL okay and if it's an external link then what I recommend is opening it in a new tab and then click on add link uh, once people click into that then that's going to take people to that product okay so if you want to add an image of that product you can click on add media and upload files or I've already uploaded the image here so we're going to be using let's say this one here okay and then you can insert that into post okay so let's say for example um, I've also cropped the image to a thousand times 688 so anywhere between that size is fine for a blog image okay so here you will need to set the size to maybe full size otherwise it's gonna crop to a smaller size and it's gonna be a bit blurry okay so insert that into post and that's gonna add a picture in there okay so to add a video click on enter and you can grab a YouTube video and all you need is to grab the URL and then you can actually just post it in and it will automatically pop up in about a second or so okay so that's how you do it you can also you know change the colors and things like that so I'm pretty sure you guys know how to use this section here here then you'll probably need to add in a category okay so let's just say this one is you know travel then you put in travel and then you could put you know the location of where you travel to or anything like that okay so this one might be great or China click on add okay scrolling down you can set in a featured image okay so what I recommend is for the featured image crop it to the same size okay so 1000 times 688 this one is 1000 times 688 and also this one as well okay so you could crop it to 1000 times 600 but make sure that you know they are pretty much the same size because that way it's going to display properly when you set it in so let's just select that one there and set in featured image and then scroll down here you can also customize the layout of the post individually in the themify custom panel section but if all is good click on publish and then you can view that post by clicking the URL here or you can click on view post so here is your blog post and that is looking good so I'm gonna add in two more blog posts really quickly okay so I'm gonna click on post here and I'm going to paste in the lorem ipsum again just paste that text in here I'm gonna quickly do it so I'm just gonna put in a title put in a new category lifestyle um, I'm gonna skip the tags and I'm just gonna set in a featured image Okay, so I'm just adding in extra blog posts so that we can actually have some content to display on our homepage. Okay, so set that in. And then I'm going to click on publish. And then I'm going to click on add new. Copy that text again. Paste that into here. Set in a new title. Okay, a new category, design, add new, and then set in the featured image, this one here, set that in, and then click on publish, and then you can click on all post, okay, and here you can actually view and edit your blog post okay so I'm going to show you how to display your products and also your blog post and how to build out your home page right now so what we're going to do first is we're going to turn on the builder and I'm going to show you the simple way of adding in and displaying your products and also another method okay so for example if we want to let's say add in our products we can actually look for the WooCommerce module okay should be the last module click it and drag it into the section that you want to display it at okay so for example there and here you can display it you know as the categories 
I can display the featured products, which I'll be showing you how to actually set in specific featured products because sometimes you might have, you know, 100 products, but you want to display, you know, three top selling products. I'll show you where to actually set that in. Here you can change, you know, all the display options of how you want to actually display your products. Okay, so you can display it in maybe, um, you know, two, two products per column, or you can display it in like four, okay? You can also change the display options. So for example, you can change the it to the overlay option, okay? So for example, if you click on done, and if you click on save, and if we close it, then you'll see that it is overlaid, okay? So for example, it is just the image, and when people hover over that, then it overlays with the pricing and add to cart buttons. Okay, so you can display it in a few different ways. So we're gonna turn the builder and double click that module again, okay? So here you can just definitely just play around with it. So for example, if you wanna hide the add to cart or the, the prices or the sales badge, you can do all that, okay? So I'm gonna show you the other way of doing it. So we're gonna click on done. And I think this way is important to know because um, you might want to have a, a different layout. Okay, so for example, this is the layout I'll show you how to create. So for example, if you go to Gymshark, right, you'll see that they have, you know, just maybe just like an image and maybe a, a button to link to their collection, okay, or something like this. Or if you go to Nike, then they have the product image and it links to the category, right? On Nomadic Mat, they just have the image of the ebook and then they have an add to cart button. So it's like completely different layout. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So for example, this one here, it's three different columns. So the first thing you wanna do is separate it into three columns, right? So you can hover over the purple thing here, and then you can select the three columns, okay? Like that. And here we're gonna add in a background image. So we're going to click on the column styling, okay? The paintbrush thing. Click on the background and here click on browse library to upload the file and let's say for example this is the product you want to add in okay so we can insert file url and for the background mode you want to select full cover the background position you can just keep it as center center but what we want to do is we want to add some padding because you can't see the image so let's add some spacing click on this all and let's add maybe, let's try 10%, okay? So I think that looks okay-ish, okay? I'm gonna drag it up maybe to 15%, something like that, okay? So you can also add it to the bottom, but I'm gonna add a button to the bottom. So if I actually add a button to the bottom, then, and if I add padding, then it's sort of going to add spacing below that uh, button. So we're gonna leave this as zero, click on done. And let's add a button in there. So we're gonna drop in a button, okay, in that column. And this button can link to this product or it can link to a specific category, right? So you can change the appearance of the button and things like that, but we're gonna change the text to maybe learn more or you could change it to shop now. And let's say you wanna link it to a specific category, right? So I'm gonna copy this link in a new uh, and open up in a new window, okay, the shop page. And let's say you want to, you know, link it to a category, specific category, then you could click on this product. Okay, let's say you want to link it to a women's category. As you can see here, this is called the breadcrumbs, okay? And if you click on the women's, that's gonna take you to the women's category, right? So you can link it to the women's category by copying that link. Okay, going back here, and you can paste that into here, right? And when people click on that, it's gonna link to here. Change the button color, and then click on done. Okay, so what you can do is really create a custom sort of layout for your homepage. You don't have to just have, you know, a default product. You could have a product here, and you could have some text explaining about uh, what's so special about the product, right? Or you could do something like, let's say for example, we want to duplicate it, okay? We want to create three different uh, things. You can easily just duplicate it. So if you hover over the column, you can copy the content and styling, okay? And hover over the uh, next column 
and then you can actually paste that in. Okay, paste the content and styling. Click on OK, and it's going to um, copy that data and paste it into here. Okay, so we're going to do the same. We're going to copy content styling, and then we're going to paste it into here. All right, and all you really need to do is double click background, delete it, and you know upload the image. And you can also double click straight away without clicking on done. Um, it will automatically save. So you can double click here. And then you can go to the background. And we're going to set in maybe a green image. Okay, something like that. And then click on done. Okay, so what you can actually also do is you can actually link it directly to the cart button. Okay, so what I mean by that is, okay, so, so for example, if uh, we want to link it to the cart automatically. If you actually hover over the add to cart, on the bottom left, you'll actually see the URL that will actually add that product to the cart. Okay, so you can right click, copy that link address, and you can double click the button, paste in the product URL here. Okay, so what's that going to do is it's actually going to, once people click it, it's going to add that to cart. So let's say, for example, someone clicks on that. Okay, it's going to add the dress to the cart like that. So let's go back here. And you can change and edit that. Okay, but what I'm going to show you now is how to actually, you know, make sure that everything looks good. All right, so let's go back here, turn on the builder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some spacing on the top and add some text. So Let's add maybe a text on the top. So this one might be, you know, newest collection. Okay, let's set this to heading two. And then what we want to do is click on styling, font, and align the text to the center. Click on done. And then we want to add some padding to the top. Okay, so you can add padding either to the text module. Okay. Or you can also add padding to the row module. They're pretty much the same thing. So it doesn't really matter where you actually add the padding as long as, you know, visually it looks good. Okay. And just click on styling here, padding. Let's add maybe try 5% to the top. Okay. Here we're going to add some padding. Okay. Between the text and also the image. So double click the text styling. Um, padding, sorry, and then we're going to add some to the bottom. So maybe 3% this time. Okay, something like that. All right. And the next thing we're going to create is a button. Okay, so this button is going to link to the shop page. So it so people can view all the products. Okay, and then we're going to put a little divider line to separate the content. Okay, so whenever you have a different section, you want to either separate it by a line here, or you can either separate it with like a whole background image. Or for example, um, people actually use like a, a gradient, sort of light gray uh, gradient to separate the content. Okay, so you don't want like just a huge block of content, otherwise it's gonna be too squished together and it looks really sort of cluttered. So we're going to drop in another button, okay, below that. And then you could um, change the color, okay, and link it to your shop page. So let's link it to the shop page and then paste it into here. This one is going to be view all. Okay. And then maybe we can align the center and we can also add some padding to separate it. Okay. So click on padding. Let's do maybe 3% or maybe a little bit more. Um, I'm going to try 3% for the bottom. Okay. Click on done. And then we're going to add a little divider line. Okay, here, and drop it below. And then here, you can set in the divider color. I'm going to click on custom for the width. Okay, and then for the alignment, I'm going to align it to the center like that. Click on done. You can view the uh, preview by clicking on preview up here. And you can see whether or not that looks good or not. Okay, so I think that looks okay. And we're going to create the next section, which is the categories. Okay, so make sure to turn on the builder and let's drop in maybe a text module. You can drop it in or you can just actually duplicate this one here. Okay, so you can duplicate it. 
and then you can pull it down here, right? So you can actually zoom out of the screen a little bit. So zoom out to 50%. So it's easier to rearrange the layout sort of thing. Okay. And then what you can actually do is change the text to maybe categories, right? And then click on done. And then we can drop in a product categories. Okay, down there. And then here you can display your categories, right? So you might have men's category and women's category. Um, you can select two columns, something like that. And then you can select specific categories and exclude specific categories. It really depends on how you want to sort of display it. Okay. So here to actually exclude categories, you need a product category ID, which I'll show you how to get pretty soon. So we're going to scroll down here and then you can hide, you know, specific categories and all the display options and things like that. I'm going to select this one here, three columns. Okay. And then I'm going to click on done. So here I might add some padding to the top of the row. So some padding here, I'm going to add maybe let's try 3% or maybe a little bit more 5% like that. Click on done and save it and then close it. So what we need to do is set in the images here. Okay. To do that, you can go to the dashboard. And here you can go to products, okay, hover over products and click on categories. And here we're going to actually add in the um, image for the categories, right? So you can click on edit for ebook, for example. And in here, upload image. And then this one here is a ebook. So you can select that as the primary category image update. Scroll down, uh, make, sure, make sure that is updated. Okay, so then you can go back and click on categories or you can click here. And then here for men's edit and then upload a image. So this one might be this one here. Okay. Use image, click on update and then click on back to categories. And then here for women's click on edit, upload select the image, use image and update. Okay. Click on back to categories. Okay. So how do you actually get the category ID to exclude it? You can click on, let's say if you click on edit, right here, you'll have the product category tag ID equals 24. Okay. So that is the category ID number, right? And if you actually want to set in the feature product, which I was going to show you before, click on all products. Okay. That's going to display all your products. So what you need to do is select the star icon to make that product a featured product. Okay. So we're going to go back and visit our site. Then you should see the images uploaded. Okay. We're going to turn on the builder and edit the link color. Okay. So you're going to double click. So you want to go to styling and then you want to go to link and change the link color to white. Okay. Cause we want to make that sort of visible. Okay. And then go back to product categories. I'm also going to remove the product counts to no. Okay. Like that. It looks a lot more professional and then we can click on done. Okay. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. The next section we're going to create is displaying the blog section. So we might need to add in the divider line. So let's just get the divider line from here, duplicate it. Okay. Grab the divider line. Okay. Bring it down and drop it below. Okay. So you got the line there now. Now let's scroll back up and we're going to duplicate the category text module. So hover over on the right and duplicate. And then we're going to zoom out a little bit to let's say 75% and let's drag one of the text modules down here into the new row. Okay. And then we can rename this part news or you can name it blog. Um, I'm just going to put in blog as a title and then you can click on done. So what we're going to do is I'm going to double click the row. Okay. We're going to add a little bit padding to that row for some spacing. So click on styling padding and click on all, and then we might do 
to the three percent to the top like that okay click on done and to display the blog post we can hover over on the right on the green and then look for post okay and then drag it and drop it into the row all right so here you can actually display it in different sort of uh, grid formats okay so i'm going to select grid three and you can also change the content layout as well okay we're going to keep it as default it looks pretty good and you can also select it by categories and things like that as well okay so the one thing that we want to do is we want to remove the text here okay so this is here and the display options and by default it's selected excerpt which is like a little summary okay you can select content which shows the whole blog post you don't really want to do that unless it's probably on your blog page or something like that um, but generally we're going to select none and then that's going to remove that all right so you can also hide the titles and hide the dates and hide the post meta and things like that so you can play around with the different settings and then click on done but what we're going to do is click on the styling tab and then click on font and we want to align everything in the middle just like that and then click on done okay so you can click on done save it and then you can close it all right so we're going to scroll down have a little look okay i think that looks pretty good the next section is we're going to create the video background okay and the gradient background which is really cool so this could be your featured products and generally what i like to do for an e-commerce store is to have a sort of call to action on the bottom of the page okay because the purpose of your store is to make sales right so you want them to have a strong call to action when they scroll down to the bottom so that's what we're going to do and we're going to go back to our website and then we're going to turn on the builder and here we're going to hover over the row and then we can click on the styling okay and then we can click on background and then for this one we're going to select gradient all right so we're going to click on the first circle and then here we're going to set in a color code so the color code that we're going to set here is e23 dff okay so it's like a purple color and then we're going to click on the second one okay on the back and then this color code is going to be ff474 d okay and then you can click on the outside and that will save all right, so to find really cool gradients, you can go to a website called uigradients.com and you can click on show all gradients and then you can select a color that you like or a color that you're gonna use for the theme of your website and they'll provide a lot of different examples. Okay, so you can, for example, you like maybe this one here, then you can get the color code by clicking on it and it'll be copied to your clipboard. So we're gonna go back here and then we're going to maybe add a little bit of padding all right so let's add maybe let's try five percent to the top and five percent to the bottom okay we're going to be putting stuff in the middle okay so it's going to stretch out a little bit further so what we're going to do now is we're going to hover over the purple uh, row again and we're going to separate it into two columns okay so the first column here we're going to put in a sort of a video background in the column right so alternatively you can actually add in maybe just a image or maybe you could add in a slider or you can add in just a video okay so a video let's say for example you put in a video and then we actually get the video url okay copy that and then you can actually paste in the video url and then you can easily just display a video which people can click on and then you know it plays right or you can actually let's just say you want to put it on the background then you can hover over the row uh, the column sorry hover over the column and then click on styling background and then you can click on video and paste in your YouTube URL and here you can disable the audio and disable looping which is sort of like a replay and you can also enable video background to play on mobile and I think it sometimes it might not work on all mobile devices because you know they might be using older technology okay but you can also what i recommend is setting in a background image as well as a fallback 
okay because sometimes if it doesn't display then it'll display the background image that you put into here okay so you can browse library and you can upload a image for example let's just say this one here okay and then insert file url change it to full cover and i think that is okay okay so what we're going to do is also stretch that video out so as you can see it's quite uh thin so click on padding and then click on all let's try 10 percent to the top and maybe 10 percent to the bottom maybe a little bit too skinny so stretch it up to 15 percent okay i think that looks okay and then click on done right so here we're going to add some text and what i'm going to do is just going to copy this text here so i'm going to copy the text and then just drop in a text module okay because it is text from somewhere else you'll need to paste and match style or paste as plain text okay for trending now we're going to set this to heading 2 okay so what you're going to notice is that we're going to click on enter is that uh, the whole sort of paragraph is set to heading 2 what you do want to make sure is you have some space here okay so this is heading 2 here we need to set in a paragraph text okay so set it to paragraph something like that okay and then we want to go to styling font change it to white so it's more visible okay so it depends on your background click on done and then we're going to drop a button okay so we're going to drop in a button which is going to link to our featured products or our shop page okay so for this instance i'm just going to link it to our shop page okay so this one we're going to name it shop now put in the url you want to link it to and also the button just like that click on done all right so to finish off the layout what i also want to do is i sort of want to align the text um, in the middle of this video okay so for example if we actually hover over the purple row again okay for the column alignment we want to set it to this one here okay which is going to align into the center like that okay so if we zoom out of the screen we're going to look at the overall layout and then you can just fix the padding for each of the sections which you know is a bit wonky um and yeah i think that's pretty looking pretty good congratulations um what we can actually do is we can actually click on the drop down arrow here and maybe we can click on save as revision okay so that's going to save the layout that we just built for our home page so you might want to name it you know home page and then you might want to put a date on that okay so click on ok and then if you have any problems like you might accidentally delete something you can hover over here and load that revision up okay so it's sort of like uh, microsoft word you have the option to save that revision um, you can also save that as a layout as well so you can save it as layout so for example this one will be home page and then you have date right and then click on save we're going to save now click on close okay so we've built our home page layout and it looks great but there's one more thing that we need to do so what we need to do is you need to actually resize the screen and we need to actually set in the mobile layout or make sure that your website is 100% mobile friendly or even more streamlined for mobile devices. So as you can see, if you're scrolling down here, you'll notice that the text here is covering the image here and it may not be as visible. Um, you'll also notice that this uh, image here, you can't really see the shoe. The padding is quite, it's not enough, okay? Um, scrolling down here to the bottom, okay you'll see the padding is not enough here and also the video here the padding is not enough either and you know this text here might be a little bit big for mobile devices so i'm going to show you how to edit that okay so it's going to be really awesome so for example let's go to tesla.com okay so on their desktop devices um, they have just one hero image and then they've got the navigation menu to navigate to each of the different pages for each of the different models right if you actually resize the screen it actually changes right because now what happens is the navigation menu is in mobile format okay so probably less people will actually click into the mobile menu so they've streamlined the sort of uh, mobile experience by actually just providing you know each of the different sections here 
and then people can click directly into it. Okay, so they have a streamlined mobile experience for you know their website, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do for your own website. Okay, so this is really important because sometimes you know you don't want to display certain things or you want to resize certain things. So let's turn on the builder, and I'll show you how to edit that really easily and really quickly. Okay, so here on the top you have different um, settings. For example, tablet. Uh, tablet in portrait and also the mobile all right so let's click on mobile and you can set um, the settings for each specific device I'm just going to show you how to set it for mobile and you can repeat it for each of the devices if you need to all right so let's say for example um, the first hero image here we're going to double click okay into the row so we're going to edit the background so you can click on styling okay make sure that this thing is selected here, the mobile device. You can click on background and you can actually change it to just an image or um, a gradient. Okay, so what we're gonna do is scroll down though to row overlay, okay? And for the row overlay, what I'm gonna do is click into it, select black, and then I'm gonna select maybe 15% uh, in opacity. And that's gonna add sort of a darker background to the background image or the background slider to make that white text pop a little bit more because on mobile devices, it might actually cover the image, um, you know, because on desktop, as you can see, it's it's quite visible if you actually put it on the left-hand side. But on mobile devices, it's gonna be squished together and it's not gonna be as visible. So we add a little bit of, you know, black to it, okay? And then that will make the white pop. And then you can click on done. Scrolling down to the next section here, you can actually double click the, the column and then click on padding. And what you can do is just extend the padding to maybe 30. Okay, I think that looks okay. Do the same for the next row. Okay, the next column, sorry. To 30. And then the next one, double click, padding to 30 as well. So for example, if you don't want to actually um, display the categories, uh, what you can actually do is here you can actually for this row you can actually set the visibility settings so if you actually go to I think if you go to here the three dots you can set the visibility okay so you can click on visibility or you can go to the uh, the options here and then set it here okay so you can actually hide it on mobile devices all right so on mobile devices your category section won't actually show and then you can click on done, scrolling down. You can do the same for the blog because you know you might not want to display um, something like that, but I'm just gonna leave it as is, okay? And for the next section here, we want to double click the column again and maybe add a little bit of padding to it. Okay, so maybe 25% and 25% for the bottom. Something like that looks quite nice. And here you can double click this uh, text module and we can click on styling and you can add some padding as well, right, to the top. Another option that you can actually do is you can actually, let's just say we, you know, click on zero and just set it to zero padding, click on done. You can actually hover over the row and you can set the column direction. Okay, so for example, um, on Gymshark, okay, if you, sort of uh, minimize the screen, you'll see that, you know, this thing here, it moves down here, right? So you can actually do something like that for your website as well. So go back here, you can change the column direction like that. And instead of, you know, adding padding to the text, you might need to add padding to the button here, right? So you could, let's say for example, add some padding to the bottom. So maybe 5%. Okay, something like that, and then click on done. Okay, so once you're happy with it, then you can also play around uh, with the different settings for tablet landscape and tablet on portrait. You can also change the text size as well. So any time that you're actually on the mobile setting here, you can actually, you know, set in anything and then, you know, it will actually change specific for that device, right? So for example, you can click on font, and you can actually, you know, reduce the size of the font, right, to 
maybe uh, 14%, okay, 14. And then if you click on the desktop, you'll see that the size is back to the default 16, okay? So we can click on save and close it. Now the next section I'm gonna show you how to add in is the social media section down here, okay? And then I'll show you how to customize the footer section as well as adding in the free shipping, okay? The notification thing, which is, I think this part is one of the most important parts. So make sure to keep on watching. Let's head back to our dashboard. Make sure to open up all your social media accounts. Okay, for example, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And then what we want to do is we want to go to Themify Shop, Themify Settings, and we're going to paste in the URLs. Okay, so we're going to click on Themify Settings, okay, and then go to Footer Social Banners. All right, and here you can select the banners that you want to display. All right, so for example, Twitter, and then we've co we're gonna copy over the Twitter profile URL, and then we can just paste it into here, okay? So when people click on that, it's gonna link here, right? And then same for the Facebook. Okay, so we're gonna copy over my Facebook page, paste it into there, and then we've got YouTube. Okay, so copy that. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and then paste that in. Instagram, you can paste in your Instagram profile URL. Okay. And then once you've done that, you can click on save. Okay. Now we can open our website in a new tab to view and see how that goes. All right. Okay, so that looks really, really cool. Really, really awesome. Okay, let's say if you want to put, you know, your social media links just down here as a widget, you don't want this section, right? So you can do the same thing, all right? Just go to social links here, and all you need to do is to paste in your your link URLs, okay? And for each section, okay? And you can also add link. Let's say Instagram is not here. You can add that in and save. And then all you need to do is you need to go to appearance, widgets and then here on the left hand side you need to look for themify themify social links okay click it and drag it and drop it into the below footer logo widget okay and that will display your social media links just as sort of very um, small icons here okay but I like the look of this because it looks really nice and modern okay so I'm gonna leave it as that now what I'm gonna show you to do is how to sort of customize the footer layout section, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to first add in a, a payment, okay? A payment thing. So what we're gonna do is go back to our settings and let's just remove this part first, powered by WordPress and also the logo, and then we will add some icons there. Okay, so go back to theme settings and then you can click on footer text and you can hide footer text too. Okay, so you can change it, your text and stuff like that if you want to. We're gonna leave it as is, okay, save it. And then we're going to go to the theme appearance, okay. So here you can actually change the header design to different designs for your header, all right? And you can also play around with the display settings of what you wanna display in your header section but we're gonna scroll down to footer design and I want to exclude the site logo. And you can exclude, you know, the back to top button and things like that. For example, this one here, you can exclude that. Okay, we're gonna exclude this. Save it. And refresh, scroll down and you should have a really nice and simple footer design. All right, so we're gonna go back here to our dashboard section. And what we want to do is go to Themify Shop, click on Builder Layout Parts. Okay, so we're going to build a new layout part that we're going to paste in essentially. Okay, so click on Add New and we're going to label this Payment Icons. So let's just close all our social media. Okay, so here we're going to label it payment icons, all right? And then we can click on publish. 
And then what you want to do is click on view post. We're going to edit the layout part from the front so we can actually see what we're doing. Okay, so we can turn on the builder. And here you have the same thing like a row and you've also got the columns. So what you can do is you can click on the plus here and then we can drop in an icon module. You can set in the different size of the icon. So we're going to set it as normal. For the icon background style, set it to none. And here you can select the icon. So click on insert icon. And we're gonna look for the payment icon. So I'm gonna click on brand. And we're gonna try and look for some payment icons. For example, okay, so American Express or MasterCard. I'm gonna go and click on Visa first. Okay, the first icon. And then I'm gonna remove the label. So delete that, okay? And you can click on add new icon. And then here we're gonna set in insert and click on brand. And then this one, we're gonna select MasterCard. And for the logo color for the Visa one, I'm just gonna set it as default, okay? Just a normal gray neutral color, which works really well with any website. Click on add new. And then here we're gonna do PayPal. So you can also search for PayPal. Okay, you can search this one here or this one. It's really up to you. I'm going to do that one. And then we're going to click on add new icon. Insert icon. This time we're going to try Stripe. Okay, we're going to insert that one there. Okay, so you can try and insert um, all the icons or all the payment options that you offer. But I think this is good enough. And then we're going to click on done. So once you've done that, then I think what you can do now is just to click on save it. You don't really need to edit the styling of it. We're gonna put it into the footer widget section, but you can also change you know, the styling if you want to. Like you can align everything to the center, okay? You can even add a background color, which is something that I'll be showing you in another, um, in another few minutes. Okay, so click on save and then just close it. Right, so you have the payment options here, right? So we need to go back to our back end or the dashboard. Sometimes the dashboard thing is not gonna show up. Okay, you can't click on it. Okay, so you can either just go back to your homepage by deleting the URL, okay? And then, and then the dashboard toolbar will come up or you can just turn on the builder again and then you can click on back end and that's gonna take you to the back of the website. It's going to take you back to the Themify layout parts. Copy the short code. Okay, so this is a short code which you can paste in anywhere and that will display this specific layout part. Make sure to update and save it. And we're going to go to appearance and then we're going to go to widgets. All right, so what we're going to do is just drop in a normal text widget here and drag and wiggle it up to the top and drop it below footer logo and then here paste in that short code okay save and then click on done so if we go back and refresh our page then we should see some payment icons show up which looks good that looks pretty good now what we're going to do is add in something like this, okay? So here, you'll see that they have a notification that says, you know, free shipping or free returns. Same with the website Iconic, okay? You've got free shipping, fastest delivery and free returns. And you've also got this section up here. So it's a little bit muted, the design, okay? So it's very, very minimal. And um, it's like a, you know, secondary header, right? So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do it for your own website. So you can have, you know, the best designs in the world. So what we're gonna do now is to create another layout part, right? So Themify Shop, Themify Builder Layout Parts, and create Add New. So this one is going to be, let's say, um, I think free shipping. So just label it free shipping. It's just for your own reference, all right? And then you can click on Publish and then we're gonna build the layout on the front end. Okay, view post. 
turn on the builder. All right, so what we can do is add in a simple text. So just drop in a text module into there. And then here, what I wanna type is, I'm just gonna copy it from here, okay? Free shipping when you spend more than $75, all right? You can do anything that you want, really. So paste that in, okay? So once you have that text there, you can click on Done. And I wanna set the background to be black, or dark gray, sorry. And then we're gonna double click on the row, okay? Styling, and then we're going to set in a background color. And this time we're gonna try and set 222, which is a, a dark gray, all right? Okay, and we're gonna make sure that the text is visible, so you can click on font, and it can change the font color to white. So anything within that row, the font color will be white. That is looking good. We're also going to align it into the center, like that. And then we're gonna click on done. So as you can see, if you click on preview, you'll see that there is some spacing there, right? So we're gonna click on that again, and we're gonna click on the text module, double click, styling, and instead of padding, we're gonna be adding in or decreasing the margin. So margin is basically like spacing, but it sort of impacts for example, the text module, when we hover over it, you'll see the blue box around it. Margin impacts the spacing outside of that box, that invisible box, okay? So let's just say, for example, we do like 100, 100 pixels. That's going to add 100 pixels outside that blue box that I'm hovering over right now, right? If I actually do like, for example, on padding, I do like 100 pixels, right? It, it adds the spacing inside that invisible box. So as you can see the blue box that I'm hovering over, it adds spacing inside that box. All right. So this time we want to decrease that spacing inside that blue box. Okay. Um, what we could do is we can minus some margin, right? We can do minus maybe five, maybe that's not enough, maybe 10 something like that. Okay, so you can do minus 10 pixels to the bottom and that's gonna decrease the spacing, okay? You can, let's also try and add maybe two pixels to the top or maybe three pixels to the top like that. Okay, I think four is pretty good or let's say five. Okay, five is good. And then you can click on done. And then you've got a nice layout here, which looks something like that. Okay, so you can also, you know, change the size as well if you want to make it a little bit smaller. So let's change it to 14, something like that. I think is perfect. Click on done. And then we are, let's just decrease everything. Okay, the padding, I mean the margin a little bit. Let's do three. This one, 11. Okay, so it's really up to you and what, you know, font you're using. But I think that looks good. So save that, and then we're gonna to go to the back end. And what we're gonna do is paste in that short code into a hook area, right? So copy the layout part to your clipboard, and we're gonna make sure we update that. And then what we wanna do is we wanna to go to the Themify settings, to the hook content area. So let's just wait for that to load. Okay, so go to Themify settings. And then what we wanna do is click on hook content. And then here you can see the hook locations. So you can add content to anywhere on your website, which is basically not a place where you can sort of um, turn on the builder and edit. Okay, so these are in different areas, okay, of the website. So you can have the, the free shipping thing in different areas. For example, you could have it before and you can have it after. You can also have one before and one after, for example, like this, one before and one after. So it really depends on what you wanna do and you know how you wanna implement it, doesn't really matter. So here, I want to implement this one, header after, okay? I want it to go all the way across from left to right. So click on add item. And then here, you can select header after, okay? And paste in the short code. And then you can also set in specific conditions, which um, you can set it to apply on certain pages or not apply, okay? So you can play around with that. Um, we're gonna leave that as is. 
okay? And then we're gonna click on save. Once you've done that, then we can go back here and refresh the page. Okay, so that looks pretty good, except I think there might be a little bit of a white border around there. And if you wanna remove that, then to do that, you can go back to the layout part. So go to Themify Shop, build a layout parts, and go back to the free shipping one and select front end. And what we need to do is put in a negative margin on the row as well, okay? So here, click on the row, okay? Styling, margin, and here for the bottom, uh, set it to negative two or negative one. I think maybe negative one will be enough or two. Click on done, save it. And then we can go back to the back end and that should have saved. So we're gonna refresh our page and view that again. Okay, so that's looking awesome, right? So the next section, what I'm gonna show you is the WooCommerce settings, which includes the payment options, the coupon codes, the shipping, and all the important stuff like that. So you can actually start accepting payments. Okay, so let's hover over WooCommerce and we can click on settings to edit all the payment settings and all the general settings for your store. So here in the general tab, you can set in your store address and set up your selling locations. So for me, I'm just gonna leave everything as is. You might want to limit it to maybe just your local country if you want to, and that's where you can do it. You can enable the coupons and also the tax rate and calculations here. We're gonna leave everything as is. For the currency options, you can set your currency in here and then click on save changes, okay? So you can go through each of these different tabs. So for example, tax should be automatically calculated because we set it up to connect to Jetpack, which will actually automatically calculate the tax rate based on the shipping addresses, okay? So here are all the settings which I normally leave default. We're going to click on the shipping tab, okay? So this is where you can actually set in specific zones and specific prices for each zone. So let's say for example, in Australia, um, you might be in the United States, India, UK, um, we can set in a, for example, we can add a free shipping rate as well. So you can click on edit. And here, you can add in another shipping method. Okay, so add in another shipping method, for example, free shipping, and add that in. So here you can click on edit, and if you have a minimum order amount, you can set that in. So a minimum order amount of, let's say $75, because that's what we put in, okay, on our homepage, so save changes. You can also rearrange the order like that. And let's say you have a free shipping, you might have a flat rate, which is $10, okay? You might have another one, which is maybe express, so maybe express next day delivery. So you can click on add and select flat rate again, add that in. And then for example, we can set in a specific price for this one. So this one might be express shipping, right? And the cost might be $20 instead and save changes. So you might be, let's say if we go back to shipping zones here, right? Because as you can see, the zone name is set to Australia. It might be set to, you know, uh, Oceania, which is Australia, New Zealand. So you can actually add in another region as well. If it's sort of the same price as that you would ship to anywhere in Australia, you can add in that region. So you click on edit and we can here, we can set in another region. All right, so click here, type in New Zealand. Okay, so for this shipping zone, we can change it, let's say Oceania. And then this one is for Australia and New Zealand and all the shipping prices are the exactly the same. So if, example, free shipping is also minimum order of 75, okay? And they can save changes. So you can be a lot more specific as well to be specific zip codes or specific states if you want to, because sometimes the shipping costs might be different, right? If we click on zones here, 
You can also set in um, locations not covered by your other zones. So click on manage shipping methods. And here, so here is all the locations not covered by the zones that you set in before, all right? So for example, this might be, let's say, you know, $20. Okay, so $20 and then save changes, all right? So if people are from a different country other than Australia and New Zealand, for example, United States, the flat rate for United States and other countries is $20 or whatever you put in here. Okay, so you can add in additional methods, for example, free shipping as well. But maybe this one, it might be a minimum order of uh, $100. Okay, save changes. And then you can put it up there, right? And click on save changes. So I think that is pretty much it for the shipping zones. You can also click on shipping options as well. So let's click on shipping options and see what we can change. Okay, so here you can actually um, set in the settings on, you know, whether or not you want the shipping calculator display on the cart page. All right, so what that means is if we visit this store and then we click on the view cart. So here, if you actually set in to hide the shipping cost until the address is entered, then this won't show up here. So you can change the display settings here and also the shipping destination. Is it set to default billing address or is it set to shipping address that the customer will actually put in um, when they proceed to check out? Okay, so normally I leave everything as default. Shipping classes I'll cover in another video, okay? So that is if you have like a heavy item, then you can set in a specific price for specific uh, products, all right? If we click on payments, here is the most important part and automatically it should be set up if you have a PayPal account, if you entered in your PayPal email already, okay? So you can actually enable all these different options here, for example, direct banking transfer, cash and delivery and all that stuff here but the most important one is PayPal checkout. Okay, you click on manage. So here, uh, make sure it's checked, right? And for your payment email, make sure that is your PayPal email here. So you can scroll down here. And here you can change the display settings of the button, all right? You can just change the display settings of the button, for example, if we go here, okay, let's say if we go back, okay, here you can change the display options, all right, so you can change the color and things like that. For example, if you want it blue, then you can have it blue, I like it gold, right? And you can also disable the PayPal button on a single product. So for example, if I click into the product, then here you'll have a, a buy now button, right? So personally, um, I'm gonna remove that uh, it's really up to you if you want to make it more convenient or not. I'm going to disable that. Save changes. And then refresh. Okay, so that's going to disappear. Okay, so you can enable or disable that. And then once you have set the settings here, then you can click on save changes. Okay, if we go back to the payments, you can click on this back. So you can also enable PayPal standard. Okay, so this is the most standard payment uh, method. So this won't allow people to actually check out automatically. What um, this one actually does is that it allows people to check out automatically and then it'll take the address um, associated with their PayPal account and then just use that as the billing and shipping information, right? If people click on proceed to checkout, then for example, people will need to fill in the billing information, right? But with the express checkout here, it allows people to automatically check out directly with PayPal. So you can enable the PayPal standard if this isn't working for you. So enable this and disable this. And all you need to do is you wanna make sure that you actually have your PayPal email in here, okay? And that is pretty much it. Okay, so if you want to also enable 
your refunds via PayPal, you need to click here and then you'll learn how to actually get to your API, which you'll need to paste into here and then save changes. So here, if we click on the accounts and privacy, here you can you know, enable uh, guest checkout as well. So you can allow customers to log in to an existing account during checkout. You can also allow a account to be created once they actually check out. So this really depends on you and what you wanna do. So here um, you can create a privacy page and select your privacy page and then click on save changes. Okay, so let's click on emails. Here is where you can actually set in the specific branding colors for your email notifications. For example, the new order that you receive and maybe a order confirmation that the customer will actually get. All right, so you scroll down. Okay, here you can actually change the colors and branding uh, things like that here and then click on save changes. All right, so that is pretty much it for your settings. So we can actually go to maybe the coupons area and I'll show you how to create a coupon really quickly. Um, it's really, really simple. So I'm gonna close that tab on top. Okay, create your first coupon or add coupon up here. So for this one, we might do like, you know, save, 30. Okay, so people if people enter in save 30, they'll save 30%. Okay, so here you can select the discount type. Okay, so I'm going to set in a percentage discount. So it's going to be uh, 30%. Okay, or it can be a specific amount. And here, if you tick it, then it will grant free shipping. And you can also set an expiry date. So it's going to end on the 31st usage restriction you can set in a minimum spend maximum spend and also set in usage limits so you might limit it per per person so you can do one you know actually this one is per coupon so let's say for the save 30 it will actually only allow 30 people to use it before it is up okay here is actually where you set the limit per user okay so you can set that to maybe you know three so it really depends on you and how generous you want to be and then you can click on publish and then people can use that coupon code. So I'm gonna do a sort of a, a transaction with you guys, okay? So normally you can actually do um, some, you can go to the settings and you can enable PayPal sandbox, but I think that's probably a little bit, um, takes longer than, you know, just actually processing a real payment. So maybe get a friend's PayPal account or credit card, or maybe you have a family member and then what you could do is just, let's just log out of the page. I've also actually set in the ebook to just a dollar, okay? So you can do that as well, just change the link to a dollar or make a really big coupon. So let's say people go to the shop page, um, they add this ebook to cart, which is a dollar, which I've set in just then, okay? And people can view the cart. Okay, so people can apply a coupon. So let's say save 30, apply coupon, and that's gonna apply 30%, okay? Which is uh, 30 cents. Here you can check out directly via PayPal, or you can proceed to check out. Okay, so let's just proceed to PayPal automatically. And I'm gonna use my other PayPal account. Okay, so I'm gonna select my other one, and then click on login to pay. Okay, so as you can see on the bottom here, people can actually select a debit or credit card. So people don't necessarily have to have a, a PayPal account. Click on continue. So once that is done, okay, here is an overview of uh, what it looks like, okay, and how much you're paying. And then you can click on place order. So this is a ebook, so it doesn't really take a address because you don't need one because people will be directed to the download page directly and people can download the ebook to their computer instantly. So here, for example, the order number, the date, um, payment method, here is the ebook and here is the download link. So people can click that 
all right? And they can download that to their computer, okay? And then click on save, and that's good to go, right? Okay, so here is the email that your customer will receive. Your order is complete, and people can download that to their computer as well with the link here. And then this is the order that you'll receive. So it says new customer order. So it shows what has been ordered. So that is pretty much it for your payment options. And you can pretty much, you know, launch your website right now, but I'm gonna show you a couple more things to make sure that your website is completely finished and good to go. Move on to the next section. Uh, this is actually where you actually manage your orders. So you click on WooCommerce and click on orders. You can manage the orders by clicking into the order and it shows all the details, okay, that you need to do. And also you can choose the actions here. You can also set the status, okay? So this one's completed because they've actually received the uh, product and also they're paid already. You can set the status, you can add some notes and update. Okay, you can also click on reports. This is where you can view your sales reports and things like that. You can view the last seven days or this month. You can also you know, view your customers, stock, taxes, and everything that you need here, right? So the next part is we're going to be adding in the rest of the pages. So I'm gonna show you how to create a simple about page, a FAQ, adding the post to a blog page, and also adding a contact form to your contact page. So we can click on the about page and we can turn on the builder and we can create a really, really simple about page in just a minute. So let's say for example, you want you know two columns, just like that. One image here, maybe a image of your office and some text here. Okay, so let's drop in a image module. Here we can delete the image URL and then click on browse library, upload a image, but we've already uploaded an image, which is this one here. Okay, our team, insert, and that is pretty much done. Okay, so we can click on done. To add in some text, we can drop in the text module, or this time I'm gonna use a fancy heading, like that. And then this one here, I might do, you know, about, for the subheading, we might do our story, and then we can click on done. Then we drop in a normal text module here. And then I'm gonna to go to my demo site and just copy over some dummy text. Okay, so we're gonna put that in. And there you go, right? We can click on done. So what we can also do is align the column alignment. If you hover over the row, set it to something like that, okay, which looks good. You can also change the layout. Okay, we can click on save and you can view whether or not you like that or not. You can also use a really cool feature which I haven't showed you yet, which is if you click on the plus icon here, you can also add the modules, but you can also add in rows which have been pre-created. So you can actually use these rows to help you speed up the process of building the layout of a uh, page. Okay, the reason why I didn't show you earlier is because I wanted to show you guys the basics of how to use things. Otherwise, because like sometimes when I follow like Photoshop or After Effects tutorials, you know, they import templates, but then after a while, like I don't understand how to use it and I don't enjoy um, actually using it, okay? So, you know, since you know how to build everything now, you can, you know, just insert that like that. And that will add the call to action section really easily, right? So you can easily change the text. You can easily double click styling and change the background really easily and create an awesome, awesome layout. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it just, a, just like that and then click on save and then close, all right? So I think that looks okay. So what we can do now is we can click on the FAQ page. So the FAQ page is actually set in right now as a wish list page, right? So the first thing we need to do is actually change that, right? So if we go to our dashboard section, we need to go to Themify Shop, Themify Settings, 
and we want to go to the shop settings, wishlist settings, and we can disable the wishlist if we want to, or we can make sure that we set it to the wishlist page. All right, click on save, and then we can visit the site. And then go back to our FAQ page. Here we have a blank canvas to work with. So the FAQ page is a page for maybe your shipping and returns or refund policy, or any frequently asked questions that your customers might uh, find useful, right? So you can turn on the builder and I wanna show you a different module. So let's maybe change the layout to, let's say this one here. Okay, so it's got one column on the left, one big one in the middle and smaller one on the right. So here we can drop in, let's say a text module on top. This one might be called frequently asked questions, right? Change that to heading one and then click on done. Okay, so we might want to make it a little bit bigger, uh, wider, sorry. Okay, so as you can see that text is a bit long. So let's just double click it for a second. Go to styling, heading, heading one font, and let's just change the font size down a little bit. Okay, so let's just try 48. Okay, maybe let's try 60, okay. Click on done. Um, I'm actually going to go to general font align to the center as well. So now what we want to do is I want to drop in a accordion. Okay, so this is really good for a FAQ. So drop that in. So here you might have, you know, how long does it take to ship? Right, so this might, might be a question and here is where you put in the content. So here you can type in normally between two to three weeks for local deliveries. And then you can do international three to four weeks, something like that, okay? And then you can add in a new accordion by adding in a new row. Okay, so that's gonna add a new one and then you can put in a new question and a new answer. So let's just delete that for now. And then here you can change the appearance. So normally, you know, a transparent one is good, right? And here you can also add in a closed icon and an opened accordion icon. So let's say for example, we click on done, we save it. And let's close this section here. Okay, if, if someone clicks on that, right, it opens up like that, right? You can keep it really simple like that, or you can add an accordion uh, icon. So let's turn on the builder, double click, right? Scroll down to the closed accordion icon. Okay, so when it's closed, we can insert an icon. So for example, um, I wanna look for maybe a, a arrow or something like that. So I might click on directional. So I'm gonna select maybe this one here, angle down. So it gives the indication of that if someone clicks on it, then it's gonna open downwards, right? And if it's opened, then we're gonna insert an icon. Okay, click on directional. And we might do angle up. So if someone clicks on it again, then it's gonna indicate that it actually closes up, right? Click on done, save it, and close it. So we're gonna click on down, okay? And then it's got the icon that goes up like that. So here obviously you can add in some more accordions and you can also align it to the center and add some padding to make it look really nice and really good and polished, okay? So you can do those things. And now we're gonna click on the blog. Okay, so the blog page is where you can display all your blog posts, right? So here, we can turn on the builder. So here you can default, you know, you can just drop in maybe a post module. So let's look for the post module, drop that in, and you might just display it as a grid, all right? And you might display the post content as 
I mean, sorry, the display as none, like that. And you can display all your blog posts, like very similar to the one that you see on Gymshark. Or you could do it like, you know, a normal blog, uh, like a blogger, right? You can do the post uh, layout like that. And then you can do the display as excerpt. That is pretty good. Okay, click on done. If you want to have a sidebar section here, you can hover over the row and we can select the layout to like that. Okay, so that has a sidebar section here. To add your sidebar, okay, hover over the green, drop in a widgetize module, widgetize area, set that to a sidebar, okay, the default sidebar, click on done, right? And that is looking very, very good. You can click on save and I'll show you quickly how to actually edit the contents of your sidebar section, okay? Because you probably don't want to display your meta and some stuff you don't want to display and I'll show you how you can actually add in more stuff that you want to. Let's close it. All right, so here you can go to the widget section directly. All right, so what I like to do is open it in a new tab again. Okay, I probably shouldn't have closed that one um, let's go to the blog again. All right. So this is sidebar widget area and here are all the different widgets. You can drop in any widget that you want into the sidebar section, just like you did for the shop sidebar. All right. So here I want to remove the meta. I also want to remove archives, recent comments, all right? So we're going to remove the meta, remove the archives, remove the recent comments just like that. And then if we refresh that blog page again, you'll see that the widgets have been removed, right? So you can pretty much do anything that you want. So you can also add in, let's say, you can also add in an image if you want to. Um, you can also add in, you know, the recent post. You can also add in maybe the most commented and, you know, your social links, videos. Anything that you really want, you can put in here. You might add in an image as well of the author, a little about me section by dropping in maybe a, a text, okay? So you can do all of that stuff, which should be pretty easy to do. But right now we're gonna leave it as, as that, all right? So let's click on the contact page and I'll show you how to edit and add in a contact form. So before you add in a contact form, um, you must have the contact form seven plugin installed, which I showed you earlier in the tutorial. Normally, if you have it installed, you have a contact thing up here. You can click onto that. And here you'll have a default contact form seven. Okay. Click on edit. And here you can edit, you know, what is displaying in your contact form. I like how it's displayed already, but you can add in additional things as well. Okay, click on mail. And what you wanna make sure is that your mail is set to your email address here. And then you can edit the messages and stuff like that, right? And then just click on save. So what you wanna do is copy the short code here. And for your contact page, turn on the builder and you can change the layout to that one. Let's just drop in a text module. Let's do something like contact us. Change that to heading one, styling, fonts, maybe move that into the center like that. And then you can drop in another text module and then just paste in the short code, something like that. Okay, you can also align everything into the center by double clicking, styling, font, align to the center, just like that. Okay, so you can add maybe a little sentence about, um, you know, whatever you need to do, or you can link them to a the FAQ page because sometimes, you know, it might be already answered already. So you can do that and you can close that. Okay, so we're pretty much created all the pages and we are good to go. But one last thing before we finish off, I wanna show you how to configure a mega menu, okay? So a mega menu is something like this. 
Okay, so it's really nice. So people can hover over each of the categories and it can show the products like that, okay? And also you can implement just a simple menu. Really nice and simple. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so let's hover over appearance and click on menus. And then the first thing that you wanna do is you want to click on screen options up here. Okay, click on the drop down, And here you wanna select product categories. Okay, so that's gonna enable the product categories here. So you can actually add that to your menu, right? So select product categories. And as you can see, that adds it there. Now, if we want to customize the top navigation, you wanna select it here. So click on select and that's gonna change. Okay, so currently we have the shop page on the main navigation, but we want to add in women's or and men's. Okay, so yours might be a different category, but I'm gonna show you how to actually do it. So here, we're gonna look for product categories, all right? And you can click on women's and then you can click on men's. Okay, and then you can add that to the menu. All right, if we save the menu and we're going to open up a new tab to view that menu. Okay, so that's just going to create a link to the men's and women's category. All right, so if you click on that, it's going to take you to the women's product category. Click on men's, it's going to take you to men's. Okay, so it's that simple. Right, so if you want to implement a drop down or a mega menu, then let's say for the women's category, click on the drop down arrow. Here you can select mega menu, mega posts. Okay, and we want to have maybe the dress to drop down from women's. Okay, so add that to menu. Okay, so for the dress category, you want it to you want to put it under the women's category like that. All right, so it's like that normally. You want to drag it and put it under the women's category. Same thing for the jumpers, add to menu. And put it below the men's category, right? So here you've selected the mega post. Here we have just left it normal. Okay, so we're going to save the menu and we can sort of refresh the page and See how that looks. Okay, so if you hover over women's, uh, the dress will pop out like that. So you might have different categories as well under here. Okay, so for now we've only got one, obviously, and we don't have many products, but you can see the image is cut off. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to make sure that it is nice and crisp. If we hover over, let's say men's, let's just refresh the page again. Okay, then jumpers is gonna pop out like that, right? So this is a just a nice and simple menu, so you can implement that, or you can do a mega menu like that, right? So let's go and save that menu, and let's go and edit the settings for the image, all right? So let's go to Themeify settings. Okay, and now let's go to the theme settings, I think, all right, and look for the mega menu tab, click on that, and here it will say displaying five posts. Okay, so leave that as default, but here is what we need to change, right? So if you remember the image size that we put in before for our product image is 800 by 800. Okay, so we want to divide 800 by six. Okay, so 800 divided by six is 150 divided by six for the height as well, that is 150. Okay, and then you can click on save, right? But let's just say if your product image is 600, right? 600 by uh, maybe by 800, then you would divide that by, let's say six again. So you have to divide both sides by six. Okay, so that ensures that the size that you put in here is 100% proportional. 600 divided by six, it will be 100. Uh, 800 divided by six will be 150, okay? but ours is a square image, so we're gonna do 150 by 150, okay? And then if we save it, and if we go back here, and let's refresh the page, okay? If you hover over women's, hover over dress, okay, you'll see the image looks really great now, and people can click onto that to direct them directly to the product page.
All right. So what I'm going to show you now is how to actually set in the logo, the fab icon, and how to change the colors and fonts for anywhere on your website. All right. So we're going to set in the colors and also the fonts for the website. All right. So to do that, what we could do is we can go to customize and automatically that's going to take you to themify options. Click on advanced options. Okay. So you're going to get more options to style specific areas of your website. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is choose a main font for our website, right? So if we actually go to websites, for example, like Nike or Apple, okay, you can download a Chrome extension called what font, and then you can click on it to actually activate it. And you can hover over, you know, what fonts they're actually using, right? Same with Apple, you can turn that on and you can see what font they're actually using for the website. So what you can do is you can open up Google and you know you can search up you know similar Google font to okay so let's just say for example you were looking at the Apple website and it was SF I think that was SF Pro okay so here So here, like a lot of people will be asking like similar questions because a lot of people want to know, okay, what font is Apple using and you know, what font can I use for my website? But normally the fonts they use are premium fonts, right? So the fonts that are included within this theme are Google fonts and Google fonts are really good as well. They have, I think over 600 different fonts you can choose from. So you can search that up and click into the result. Okay, so here are some of the fonts that you might um, work well. Okay, very similar typefaces that you can use, right? So in general, there are two different typefaces. So for example, the first one is sans serif. Now this one has plain edges on the side and also the strokes are even width. So it gives a more modern, simple and clean feel. Websites like Nike, Apple, Tesla, and most modern websites that you see will be using this typeface, all right? So these are some of the recommended ones that you can go for, okay? So you can choose one of them, or perhaps you might go with a serif typeface, which has curves on the edges and thick and thin strokes, right? So it gives a more classical, traditional look. So for example, if you are selling maybe something like this, like bed linen, then you might go for a classic typeface for your fonts. Okay, so this one has, you know, curves on the edges, different uh, widths as well in their text. Okay, so it gives a different feel, right? But for most websites, if you stick to a sans serif typeface, then it'll look really clean and modern. So for example, I'm going to pick a font called Josephine Sans. Okay, so for your font, you can click on body font here. You can set in, let's say Josephine Think that's how you pronounce it hopefully okay you can set that in and generally you don't need to have too many fonts on your website to make it uh, professional if you have one i think that is good enough and it actually looks a lot more sort of consistent if you do have just one because i see a lot of websites they have you know three or four different fonts and a lot of different colors and it doesn't look really professional so sticking to one will ensure that your website is really nice and professional so here I'm going to set the font weight to 300. Okay, so you can change the font weight, which is sort of the boldness of the text. Okay, I think that looks really good, right? And I also want to set a body link color. So a body link is something like this. Okay, so it links to something, right? So for the body link, we're going to stick to a very, very neutral color, for example, like Apple and Nike. Okay, so they're using just a dark gray. Um, sort of color scheme for the website. It is really good for e-commerce because it just, you know, brings the attention to the images and the products itself, you know, rather than focusing on the theme of the website. And it just looks a lot cleaner and simpler. It's also a lot easier to design, especially if you're a beginner sort of uh, designer, because, you know, if you have a neutral, you know, look for your website, then, you know, it's going to be a lot easier to match your images, right? So let's just say, for example, you know, if you have, you know, a red header, 
like a red background for your header. It's going to be a lot harder to match with this blue, right? Okay, so I'll be showing you that in a sec. So for the body link here, I'm going to be entering a dark gray. So you can enter in the same one. Okay, 222, two, two, just like that. And for the body link hover, okay, we're going to set it to be 333. Three, three. Okay, so it's a slightly lighter version, right? So when people actually hover over a link, then it's going to give them some feedback, right? You might make it a little bit lighter if you want to, but I think that's fine. So for example, if you go to Apple, when you hover over it, it goes a little bit darker and it gives a feedback that, you know, it is a link. Okay, so you want that feedback. Okay, so what you could do is if you want to, you know, make sure that everything is consistent, then just ensure that your your link color, okay, so whatever link color that you have in here, you can copy it. If I go to a website called 0 to 255, enter in the color code here. And then here you can choose either, you know, three shades lighter, okay, copy that code, or three shades darker than the base color. Okay, so that's going to ensure that, you know, you are keeping it all consistent. Here, click on accent styling. So as you'll notice that, you know, the accent styling right now is like yellow theme. Okay, we're going to set in a neutral color theme. So for the background color, for the accent color, we're going to set it to the same one as before. So 222. Two, two. And for the font color, I'm going to set it to white. Okay. If it's actually like, you know, six Fs, you can just type in three and it sort of auto populates the rest of it. And then for the background uh, hover color, we're going to set that to 333 as well. And then for the border color here, we're going to set it to 333. Okay. And now when you actually hover over it, okay, you'll see that it still has a yellow um, hover over color. All right, so minus that. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the header for the background wrap. Okay. We're going to keep it just as white, nice and neutral for the header link. We're going to click on that maybe, and you can actually change the color there or just leave it as is. But for the header link hover, I'm going to change it to three, three, three. And then that's going to give the, the gray hover over effect color. Okay. So I think that looks pretty good for now. So if we look at the page down here, the footer section, I'll show you how to configure that section there. If we scroll down to the footer section, okay, so this is a link, okay, so it's a footer menu link. I want to change the footer menu link hover, okay, to the same hover color, okay, keep everything the same. So when we hover over that, that will be, okay, pretty nice. Okay, let's scroll back up, let's check everything. Okay, so if we hover over this, this is a blog uh, post title. So we're going to go to post. And then we're going to go to the post title hover. And I'm going to change the color to 333 again. Okay, so try to keep all your hover over colors the same, right? And that ensures everything looks good. Let's just uh, minus all of these, close them all up. Okay, so here, if you click on the heading, this is a heading one tag, all right? So you can change the heading one font here universally. So for example, you can change it to Josephine Sands, like that, and it will change for all the heading one fonts um, wherever you've set it to. Okay, so for example, you, you've probably set that to the contact page as well. Like that, you've changed that as well. Right, so I'm just going to delete it and leave it as the default because I think that looks pretty cool. Um, that's up to you. So I'm going to change that to normal as well. And then here, you can also change the forms as well. So what is the forms, right? If you actually, let's say we go to a blog post or if we actually go to the contact page, okay, this is probably a better example. So here is a form, right? So let's just click on the contact page here. Okay, so this is a form here. You can click on forms. Here is the field. So you can click on the form field. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect apply to all borders. 
And for the bottom border, I'm going to click on solid and I'm going to choose a color. So the color that I'm going to choose is EEE -E -E, and then click on the outside and I'm going to set it to two pixels in width. All right. For the border on the top, left and right, I'm going to select none like that. Okay. So it just has a slight border on the bottom and then people can type in whatever they need. Okay. So then once that is done, I'm going to click on publish. All right. If we actually hover over the send button, you'll see that the hover over color is yellow, that gold color again. What I want to do is click on form button hover and change the color to EEE -E -E as well. Okay. And then click on the outside. And then once you actually hover over that, then it gives just a slight effect as well, right? You can also change the sticky header. So if you actually scroll down on the page, you'll see that the header sticks there. You can also adjust the sticky header as well if you need to, right? To change the logo, uh, we're going to minimize everything. Okay. You can click on site logo and tagline site logo. And here you can change the text. Okay. So let's just put it as Josephine Sands again. And then let's just say we put it as bold. So you can do that as well, which looks really cool and nice. And you can also add in your own logo image. So you can click here and upload it. You can resize the image here. What I do recommend to get a logo is to go to fiverr.com. So I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to go to Fiverr. And you can search for like logo design and you can get, you know, designs for from $5 a piece, right? So here are some excellent uh, people who do logos and you can filter them on the left. And you can also ask for a fav icon as well. So the fav icon is the icon that you see here. And you can change the logo position and things like that. You can also change the site tagline. Okay, so I've changed it to create an online store in under three hours. You can also select none. So if you don't want that there, so for example, let's click on site title. When you hover over that, you'll see that the tagline there, okay, which is cool. So I'm going to keep that there and you can also edit the mobile menu. Okay. So this is the mobile menu section and this will drop out. Okay. So the link color is the menu link hover color. I'm going to set that to three, three, three as well. So that's looking awesome. And you can obviously edit, you know, any section that you want. So if we go back to the desktop display, let's just click on main navigation. When you hover over that, you'll see that the drop down is still yellow color. So that is a drop down link um, hover color. Okay, so you can change that to 333. And you'll see that the color will change as well. Oops, I added in as the background color. You're meant to add it in as the just the link color. So change that back. And there you go, right? So I think that is pretty much it for now. Okay, so obviously you can change it for all the different sections on your website and you can play around with these settings. Uh, so ultimately, keep it as just one font family and try to keep things neutral uh, when you first start out. So if you do want to add some color to your website, for example, you want something like this, then what I recommend you do is go to a website called Flat UI Colors, okay, and then click on a Flat UI Palette. Then you can choose a color here, right? And read up on some color meanings. So go to Google and you know search up color meanings. Okay, maybe I think this one here. Read up on colors because I think colors will really sort of set the mood for your website. Let's just say, for example, this one here, it looks really nice, right? So choose a color that represents your brand and choose one main color just like they have. Okay, so they haven't used like you know, a million different colors because it's going to be really hard to match if you're not a designer. And then maybe you could have a, you know, a accent color, which is like clear, like a red or something where you can actually use for something uh, you want to point attention to. And then you can slowly just implement it onto your website. All right. So that is pretty much it. What I'm going to show you is how to add in your fab icon or where you can actually add that in. So you can close that. 
and we can head over to the dashboard. Okay, Themeify settings, Themeify shop. And then here, click on fab icon, click on upload. And then here you can upload your fab icon. I recommend 64 by 64 and uh, it should be a PNG file. Okay, and then upload that and save it. Okay, and then you'll get the fab icon appearing here. So if you actually don't see many fonts, okay, on your website, you can click on Google fonts as well. And then you can also click on show all Google fonts because sometimes the font that you want uh, may not actually show up. So you can click on that as well. Another thing that I want to show you is the search settings. So here, for example, on your website, right, by default, it will also search for your blog post and things like that. You can actually um, exclude, let's say, blog posts and, you know, pages and just include, you know, your products, right? And then you can click on save. So if you actually finish the tutorial, uh, sometimes you might notice that, you know, there is some updates available. Okay, so you can also email me at support at hogancheua.com and I can send you the updated version if you want. You can also get the updated version as well. So I'm going to leave a link down in the description, which will give you a membership that gives you one year support and also updates as well for your e-commerce theme. Okay, but the website will still function if you don't update it because the theme developers are always adding in more features and more things to the website and a lot of people like to have additional support, then that's what the membership is for, okay? So if we actually go back to revisit our website, we can scroll down, have a look at our website. Everything looks really, really awesome, really clean and simple, okay? If you have any questions, make sure to drop it down below because I know that you know this tutorial is like three hours long. There's still stuff that I haven't covered because otherwise this tutorial will be like 10 hours long. If you have any questions, leave it down below and I'll try to create maybe like a FAQ video and I'll post it, all the links and everything in the description below. So one final thing, um, I might actually, you know, edit the thing, the link there. It's a bit too thin for my liking. So I'm going to go back and quickly show you that's a main navigation link. Okay. Here, main navigation. So click on menu link and then here, let's just set in the Josephine Sands. And then also we're going to set the font weight to normal. Okay. So I think that looks a lot better for the top navigation. You can publish, close. And the final thing that you need to do is log out of your website and view it. And then you can go to the home page, start viewing it. Okay, so you've completed the website, looks awesome. Now you can start promoting it, making sales, um, or you can help other people build their e-commerce stores. Hopefully I've saved you guys a lot of money. And if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos.